Hello, everybody. My name is Octoberfest, the enthusiast, and welcome yet to another Guitar Hero podcast. Today, uh, we're here to not only talk about, uh, speak of uh, the old Guitar Hero games, but we uh, we often rather ask ourselves, "Wow, who sharded this song?" I want to talk to this guy. I want to say, th I want to go through his mind. It's like, wow, why did he put this specific uh, three note chord when it should have been like a two note chord or, you know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have uh, an ex Neversoft developer and a note tracker, of course, who worked ever since Guitar Hero 3 all the way up to Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock. And with me as a special guest, I have Asai Alec. Say hello. Yo. Hi. Okay. So now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Mr. Chris Vance. How are you doing, sir? Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm doing doing great. Thanks for having me on here. All right, Chris. Uh, so, so uh, to start this, I want to ask, who are you, and what was your origins? What what did what did you let to go and start making into the video game industry before NeverSoft and Guitar Hero and all that stuff? Sure. Uh, well, I'm Chris Vance. I am a game developer, have been for almost 20 years now. Um, my origin story uh, is a weird one, I guess. Uh, even as a little kid, I love video games. I grew up with video games. My grandparents bought me my first NES in 1988 or something like that. Oh, yeah. So it's 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 been it's been ingrained in me my entire life. And as I grew up, I made like I made little card games or board games, and you know I, I've always wanted to entertain myself and others right so it's always something that i wanted to do but it's something i kind of stopped caring about doing as much when i got older because i hit teenage years and adult years and i was like oh jobs whatever right i got it that's not realistic i'll have jobs <laughs> especially back then nowadays all you twitch streamers and stuff can make money playing video games well that would have been great uh so i i i i i was, I was just working right i was working i had a girlfriend uh, who's now my wife, but at the time we, I, I found Guitar Hero, the first one, and I was like, oh, I love this game. And my wife loved it, uh, girlfriend at the time, and we started playing Guitar Hero 2, and that came out, and even that even more just like solidified my love for the Guitar Hero franchise. I was like, oh my god, it's even better, and I want more. I want more! I want more! And I didn't know how to do more, so I went on the internet, I found Score Hero, which is a, I, it's still a community that's around, um, I'm not sure how big it is these days, to be perfectly honest. I haven't gone back there in a long time, <laughs> but I was really active on it back then. I was extremely active. Um, they taught me how to do all the, you know, customs and mods. And I wasn't the first custom maker or modder, but I was in there pretty early on, um, making customs and doing my own things because I wanted to make more for me and my girlfriend at the time, my wife now to play. Right. Um, she was a big fan of Journey. She was a big fan of, uh, uh, John, Th uh, oh gosh, what's his name? No, well, it doesn't matter. Anyways, I made songs that we both really enjoyed, right? Uh, I and to... I put the videos on YouTube, but I got kind of recruited out of that little, that little mess, which was just a random big super stroke of right place, right time, doing the right thing. So, um, I, w I wanted to ask something really funny. So, um. Somebody on the Guitar Hero subreddit asked who was the sharder for the Through the Fire and Flames, and then when people uh, started pretty much uh, naming you, somebody l linked a very interesting YouTube channel. It was called Video Game Music 5863 or something on the lines, and you even had your uh, yourself uh, claiming that you did the shards for Through the Fire and Flames, Closer by Lacuna Coil, but one of the interesting things yep. that I saw on that channel is that you did customs for Guitar Hero 2, even songs that weren't even, like, uh, DLC on Rock Band right now. So I wanted to ask, how do you get into the uh, into note tracking or sharding, as we call it nowadays? <laughs> Charting or uh, as... Uh, how did I get into it? Well, I've always loved music. I've been a musician my entire life. My mom started me on piano when I was four, I think. Um, and so I played piano and then I moved into like trumpet in elementary school, uh, guitar in high school, uh, guitar and bass. Uh, and those were my, my, my I love those things. I played on keyboards and stuff like that, obviously. And 
I've got we've got somebody bombing the call here. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, buddy. I love you. Boy. I love you. 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 But I need you to not be doing this, okay? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I I spent all this time in music, and so it was kind of easy for me to just kind of jump in and understand what to do i'd never worked directly in midi before i'd played around with it like especially like in the like early 90s on my my dad's old 386 and like just kind of uh, uh which is a computer for all you young brats out there it's a processor type <laughs> um but uh, i was working on that and we had like this little like midi software tool on there and i would just kind of plug away at it make absolutely terrible sounds but uh, it gave me a little bit of familiarity. And so once I got into the Guitar Hero, like the mod scene on Score Hero, it was kind of an easy transition for me to kind of reverse engineer and understand what was happening. Uh, that's that's just kind of how I got into it. Interesting. So nice. I wanted to ask because I want to know if this is real or not. Is it true that Activision started getting like modders uh, like you, if anything, for Guitar Hero 2 uh, to make their note tracks? Because I've seen not only you, but I've seen Alex Leffelman, who did Guitar Hero Metallica, which is based on Guitar Hero 2 engine. And then he pretty much ended up as a world tour for that game on, well, yeah, on world tour. But um, so I wanted to ask. How they many, started on world tour. So how do you get called into Neversoft to just, you know, do their note tracks for the for, for the third installment of the game? And unsurprisingly, the biggest game of that time when it was uh, at its prime. Yep. Uh, so this is kind of a, a multifaceted thing here. First, I want to point out and like kind of just like do a shout out to all of us score hero modders who managed to sneak our way inside of professional game development through this avenue. Um, there was my, uh, the hired even before me, the first one they hired out of score hero was a guy whose name is uh, Jeffrey Inkle. Uh, his handle on the score here was like orange two 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 or something like that. He did the full Weezer Blue album um, way back in the day, and that's what he got really known for was doing it, a Weezer it all Blue loops album. back around the Weezer. It does. Oh, uh, Weezer! <laughs> Weezer is the source of everything. And sadly, he passed away five or six years ago. Now he was my best friend. Like. Real funny story on him. I can share later. We'll come back to that one. But essentially, he hated me from Score Hero community. <laughs> like he was like, "No, don't hire Chris Vance. He doesn't know what he's talking about." It was so we kind of had this little head oh buddy. But we could go into that one a little later. Enemies, frenemies become best friends. Absolutely, my best friend. He was my brother. I loved him. Um, but there were several of us. There's Al Alex Luffelman. There's a guy named uh, I believe Kyle came from uh, from there as well. Kyle Leonard. Uh, if not, he was definitely hired out of our QA, which we also did a lot of internal hiring and always brought people up, which Neversoft was always fucking amazing for. Um, but anyways, the, the, the way that I personally kind of le leveraged my, my, my customs and got myself in the door at Neversoft uh, was there was uh, a post. I can't, I can't tell you at this point who it was. This was so long ago, but somebody on the Score Hero forums posted, hey, Neversoft is hiring at this link, right? And so Ooh. I had a bunch of videos of my stuff already on YouTube. I was, I was like, nah, nah, I'm with this girl. I love her. I have a lot holding me down here. A week later, she broke up with me. She's my wife now, but I wasn't doing anything. And I was like, you know, she broke up with me. I was instantly like, you know what? I'm a try for it. Fuck it. I'm out of here. I'm leaving Michigan. I'm heading to California, right? Nice threw my stuff at them and they said yes we like you come work with us interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, what a story so i wanted to uh you know what alec do you want to start asking some sharding questions for guitar hero 3 if you may have i yeah i was actually gonna say so you said you you kind of just dropped everything and you went to woodland hills and, and i literally uh, dropped yeah. everything yeah okay so <laughs> i i went I up there remember I love that. Yeah, I love that. Did did you have to have any sort of like background or credentials in the in the nope. old? 
Yeah. Okay. So what's really Nowadays, interesting is, absolutely. Uh, but back in the day, they hired yeah, the, like yeah, the yeah. industry hired people who were passionate and skilled, and were just like my bus. My best buddy who's still hard. working in games to this day is a geologist. He had no background whatsoever outside of the fact that he studied rocks, and now he's a these these are these extremely talented game dev for Insomniac. Like back in the day, that's, that's it was a lot incredible. easier just get in with passion. Nowadays, it's college degrees and all this stuff. But mm-hmm. oh yeah, gosh. no, because like. I, I remember, like, after the blow up of, you know, the guitar here on rock band genre, um, you know, a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I knew in within the community were like, I want to try and chart for rock band and all this stuff. And then you would apply for harmonics and they'd be like, yeah, you got to have like a bachelor's in like music. You got to have all this stuff. And it's just like, bro, what? I, and, you know, like these are all like 17, 18 year olds, you know, they're like, hey, we, we, we charted songs. We we know what's good. But I think that's totally awesome you brought up in my stream one time that um before that they before they had a screen actors guild clear or something you did like some voice lines in the jailhouse Mm -hmm. um in the in that uh guitar Hero three venue and like how what was that like you know just um you said a lot of stuff that happened during the guitar Hero three development was kind of on a whim or or something like that um yeah Uh, so, uh, as I watched uh, quite a bit of the interview with Jeff Swinney, and one thing that he said really resonates is so true, is Neversoft was scrappy. We were scrappy. We were a small team, especially on Guitar Hero 3, that needed to do a whole bunch of stuff in a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. I got hired at Neversoft in May. May 2nd was my start date of 2007. We shipped the game in October. When I started in May 2nd, they oh had my three gosh. songs done. I think we had three songs done. <laughs> so, like, when I hired in, they had put crunch, over. period. Uh, it wasn't even crunch. Like, we just got it done. I mean, I, I, it was it was, it was, was hidden crunch, right? Because what a lot of the things they would do is they, they didn't care if you drank. They didn't care if you, like, you're just eating at your desk the whole time or what you did, right? So it, we're, it was kind of a party house in that regard as to, like, do what you want as long as you're making good stuff and not hurting other people. Obviously, that's always a big, you know, thing. And so we would, we would, like, as Jeff kind of alluded to, we would have parties. We would do these, uh, we would, we would go out for lunches and have some drinks, come back and just knock more music out, right? Like, that's it was, so it was cool. a constant, it was a constant rock and roll session that never saw for those first, uh, eight months. But being <laughs> able to do like the mocap and the, uh, the VO and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Before like Activision kind of got more uni- like with the SAG union and stuff like that. And they started to enforce that more in video games. Yeah. We absolutely were able to get in and do stuff uh, in guitar hero, Aerosmith, all the background co- co- crowd singing that's happening during choruses and stuff like that. Like, especially during star power, that's me and all the other note trackers huddled into a little tiny sound booth, wow. just screaming at the top of our wow. lungs. Wow. Just, that like, sounds like super fun. fun. It was a lot of fun. We'd go out for lunch, get some drinks, come back, and just do some, like, mocap. Uh, not mocap, but VO, just, like, singing the songs along. And they oh and you'd hear it, like, a, a week later in the game, and we're just like, yeah! I love that. So, uh, must have been so it's like, so, uh, how was that? Can I, make my, can I make a comment? Yeah, can you... Yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, because uh, your first day was in May, and you had only, like, three songs done by that point... Uh, could that explain the reason why why Guitar Hero 3 had some questionable charting decisions in the final game? Like a, what thrust or some something? So, uh, I, I would say yes. Like, the political answer is very much so that we didn't have a lot of time to really refine our craft, right? Like, yeah. a, lot, a lot of the people that came in, uh, note tracker-wise, came from different areas, and there was some drama and contention between us sometimes because the more... Uh, musical musician we had some very very talented musicians that were doing this stuff and then we had me who was the i love to play rhythm games and i like to play a game that feels like a, a rhythm game rather than i'm simulating a guitar right like, you're you're, you're um, kind of just like me because i'm a charter myself so yeah <laughs> And and sometimes we would run into drama between some of us, and there was definitely some infighting about the way some things were done. I was very critical about some of the tracks. Um, I, people were very critical about my tracks. Uh, and but at I the end of the you. day, we shipped an amazing game, and we all did a great job, right? Like it, but it, it you will see as we progress further down, 
we did get better. <laughs> so, like, yeah, as yeah, a, no, a collective yeah, I, unit, we got better. So, uh, at, at I, making I, I absolutely agree. So, Chris, I want to ask. So, mm-hmm. now that we're in the top of Guitar Hero 3, I think it's time to ask the question How do you feel about sharding one of the most famous songs in the game, Closer by Lacuna Coil? This Come shit on. Haunts me. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I thought we were going for the one. No, no, no. no. Uh, let's let's let we're go. Oh, it's closer, closer, baby. Closer, closer baby. Closer. For the, the meme one. Uh, <laughs> I hated it. I was like, this is the dumbest song. I don't like this. I was fully. St- at that time, I was I was still young and angsty. I was only 22. I I I, I was full on metalhead. I hated pop music. I hated like alternative ro- alternative rock. I didn't care for it. So when I got that song, I was like, oh my god! I'll, out of protest, I made it a three chord three like everything's a three chord banger in it because I was just oh like, oh my gosh! I was like, I'm making this harder. On, I'm over tracking on this on this on purpose because fuck this song. <laughs> I love this song. Now. I'm sorry, this Nina Coil. I ever doubted you. I I love that song so much. It grew on me so hard. It's a fun song. But at that moment, I was just like, ah, oh, really? This is what I have to work on. <laughs> you, I I go with the answer. Because speaking of like over charting and over tracking it. Who was the guy who made before I forget? Who made that note track? Yeah, uh, his, so <laughs> yeah. his name is uh, John Bunny Knutson. Uh, he's an amazing, uh, amazing guy. One of my best friends. Uh, he was he 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 he's toured with like punk bands in the nineties. Is he's just a badass musician, but not a lot of experience with Guitar Hero. And like I think that like with that at least with that intro st- intro stuff, I think he did a fucking amazing job with the tracks that all, that all of these guys made that were coming from it from more of a a musical background rather than like a game background. Yeah. Uh, and and the, as I mean shit, like he did amazing stuff. I love that before I forget yeah. track. Yeah, I I do too because it's like playing octaves on a real guitar, like during yeah, that bridge, that was... the infamous bridge, and everybody Dude, hates. Oh my god! It. I'm here. I'm here saying the he... like. Feels, I don't think it's he used hilarious. To bring that up, that exact same up. He was like, "I, it's like, I love that." Yeah, like, I was, because I because I was I remember that I gave him feedback. I was like, "That's, that's too much, right?" Like you could just be playing the single. He's like, "Nah, bro, it's the octaves. You want to you hear them both. You want to play them both." And you know what? At the time, I think that's one of the things where I was wrong. Where I was trying to oversimplify, gamify it. Where he did something cooler, which was to like to say, "I know it's not realistic." But at the same time, it just feels cool to do with your fingers. And I was like, mm. all right, like the like the power chord jumping in the bridge and like you know, green, yellow, red, blue, yellow, orange. You know that part. I think we're all on mm-hmm. all, all on the same track, right? I think the uh, yeah. yeah, in addition yeah, exactly. to that, in addition to that bridge, I think that the they only, it only happens like one or two times where it very quickly in a sixteenth note goes from red, blue to yellow, orange to red, blue again. Like that's a very quick transition there. Mm. I struggle so much on that part as a kid. So, Alec, do you wanna do you wanna ask him the question since you've played it countless of times on stream and everything? <laughs> I just want to ask, like, how how does it feel that you charted through the fire and flames and like, you know, like that whole process of it, and just what what do you think is like the uh, what was like the crowning moment of making that chart for you? So the process was weird. It was super cool. And I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, that song is in the game because of some random person on Score Hero in 2007. I don't know who they were anymore. Don't know. They tracked this random unknown band named Dragon Force and put it into GH2, put this through the Fire and Flames in there. Note track wasn't perfect. It wasn't very great. It wasn't really tempo meant very I well. They- I think I know the chart you're talking about because uh, I remember some some really busted Fire Flames chart in GH2, like in 2006 it, or some shit. Yeah, I remember that video and, too. And, yeah, and it was like, oh wow, I love this. I've never even heard. I was met a huge metalhead at the time, right? It's like it's like video game metal. Awesome, I love it. And when we got when I got to guitar here, when I got to NeverSoft, uh, after like maybe a week or two of kind of getting comfortable there and whatnot, I was like, hey. There's this song. I think we really need to have this in the game. And I just took it to Alan Flores, who I think you guys have uh, talked to uh, previously on this interview. And he took that 
request or that that comment and he must have agreed and took it up the chain probably to like chris parisi or whoever else so i believe parisi was in charge of making like the bigger like corporate decisions of reaching out and who and whatnot yeah. and i don't know maybe a month or two later i'm getting it slammed on my desk here you go buddy <laughs> if you wanted it you got it <laughs> and it wow. was it, it was it was a process i regretted it immediately uh not in terms of it being a bad song or anything like that right but the amount of work compared to any of the other songs that i had done there it was like probably 12 times if not 20 times more work that needed to be done on this song because you, us note trackers back then we had to do we had to do the track itself on expert we had to do the hard medium and easy we had to do the light show we had to do the um the drum animations was there anything else that we did R rhythm or bass the lip sync? uh well uh, we did the lip sync too yeah oh well, adam um jennings right Rhythm more oh. bass, but we went rhythm. Uh, no, this was before uh, Adam Jennings. In the very first GH3, we still had uh, like like sort of like Guitar Hero 2 had Phenoms, I think. I think. I can't remember. Maybe I'm like conflating Guitar Hero with what we did on uh, Guitar Hero 3. It's been so long. But I know I do remember for sure we at least controlled the light shows because I made that light show insanely spastic and just like epilepsy warning lights are flashing everywhere the entire damn song um it was it was it was a lot of work it took me over a month to work on just the one song and to get it to a place where i was happy and by that point they were essentially telling me well you someone has to be able to beat it or we're cutting it from the game because we can't get through microsoft cert we can't get through sony cert with something that can't actually be done they won't pass the game and so they were like, you have a couple days. I don't remember how much time they gave me and, uh, and, and QA. They were just like, you guys got you guys got this much time or else we're, we're just going to cut this from the game. And I, it took me, I think, four days of just sitting there constantly playing guitar. <laughs> uh, Alec, you, you're, you, you know what this is like, just playing through the fire and flint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you know, I, eight I, hours. I, I just... <laughs> I like to think of it like you made your bed. Now you got to lay in it. <laughs> I <laughs> had to lay in it. And <laughs> tapping didn't the... exist. We didn't have tapping ideas yet or all these. Or the intro, you had to sound the first in notes. The and then you switched yeah. to your tapping hat to tap the fucking intro. It's Yeah, we didn't have any of that. Like, we didn't it, think yeah. about that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. It didn't arise out of the community. So I'm sitting here like trying to strum the way through it. Like. I do get to yeah. say I am the first person in the world to beat through the fire and flames. So, ha. Ah. <laughs> yeah, and there's video proof of that. There's a video proof of that on the Score Hero preview on J-Series channel. So, True. like, you could still see that on YouTube of the very first pass up through the fire and flames. It was, like, 300K. I think that's more impressive than, like, a good run. It's like passing the song with that low of a score is actually hard. <laughs> it's actually hard. Yeah. It's, like, genuinely hard. <laughs> Like, I see people on Reddit all the time saying, like, I just passed through the fire and flames, and then they, get, they got, like, 500K, 400K. But then, like, the nope. first pass ever is just, like, yeah. that's like that, that is, like, actually the bar. Like, that's so cool to me. And I take, um, it, I take it during trying to pass that, I guarantee you star power usage was, like, critical for trying to pass it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say oh, yeah. when I'm about to okay. fail. Yeah, absolutely. So, speaking Yeah, of... and also going... <laughs> so, sorry, but... uh. So this is something uh, crucial because this is very interesting. So when doing to the Fire and Flames and any other songs, how do you guys uh, think of placing the the star power phrases in there for the for us players to get the most of the points when playing the song? I want to know what what was the whole mindset. Was it every I don't know every ten eight beats and then you do rinse and repeat? There wasn't any. There wasn't any. It was what felt impactful in the music at the time, right? Like, uh, it wasn't like, hey, how can we min-max the score? We didn't think about that. We didn't care. Like, oh, if we put star power here, here, and here, then they did this, this, and this. You could get the absolute optimal path. Yeah, we, we didn't care about that, right? What we cared about with star power was either, it was one or two things, right? There was either the game dev side of things where you're thinking, okay, I've got a really tough section coming up here where they might need to use star power to get through it because it's going to help oh, yeah. get through. So we'll put star power right in front of it. But more often we wanted to kind of combo that sound of brr when you like get the, the, the star power streak and get the star power. It made a sound effect, right? We kind of wanted to combo that into the music in impactful moments. 
where it would uh, where where it would help you in that way. There were some rules, right? We had rule sets in place, like we have to have at least this many star power uh, activations in a song. We have to have at least this many, like th this much of a gap between them and uh, stuff like that. But for the most part, we weren't thinking score or anything like that. We were thinking either player experience, like how well is the player going to like. Uh, be able to use this to survive this next section and make it a little easier for them on harder songs. Mm. Or usually the most impactful one for us was try to uh, get that extra punch, that exclamation in the music uh, of doing the yeah. star power right at the right time. That was probably a big factor as well, is, yeah, the mm. skill level of everyone playing. Mm. It is. It, we're trying to... Guitar Hero... We reached a massive fucking audience, right? Like, I've worked in games for almost 20 years now. I've never touched the size of an audience that I've been able to touch since then, yeah. right? Like, hey, I peaked in my 20s what? as a game dev, and I'm okay with that because it was the greatest <laughs> peak I could have had, right? It was hey, amazing. You know what? You know what? When, the, when Guitar Hero 3 came out, that was the first game that I played in the series. And when that game came out, I was six years old. So I was a I was a little ba I was a little baby back then when the game came out. And look at me now. I'm I'm turning 22 in a in a week. Uh, basically, I'm turning 22 in the age. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, well, this, I'm I'm asking you not to do that, buddy. I'm about to slam my kid in the head because he's sneaking his head in. <laughs> I'm like throw my hands up and I elbowed like I hit his arm instead of his face. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I do want to add on like that. Um, you know, by the time that Guitar Hero, like we were all waiting for Guitar Hero 3 coming out. And like that was like the biggest hype for a Guitar Hero sequel to come out. And um, even stuff in Guitar Hero Rocks the 80s was still being undercharted. And like Guitar Hero 3 was the first time I was like, dang every single note that i'm hearing is actually being placed down here and so like guitar year three kind of just changed the whole landscape raised the skill ceiling like up yeah, one way high yeah like one by metallica wasn't f seed for like a year and in like and i know that probably sounds crazy but like it took a long time and like a lot of people had to move out of the comfort zones to learn how to play these charts which i think is ridiculous and i think i you know I give Guitar Hero 3 a lot of, you know, a lot of people have criticisms of Guitar Hero 3, but, like, still, it's responsible for people going crazy, um, you know, just, like, getting extremely good at the game. Yeah, what, what was there, like, 80 songs? songs? There was, like, like 70, 70 songs 80 in G3. Songs in and plus right? DLC, and it like, was, like, yeah. We had five of us. So, the, like, the initial note-tracking team was Jeffrey Inkle, David Stillwater, uh, who is now uh, 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 audio designer on Diablo 4, is the latest, latest game he worked on. Um, uh, Brian Marvin, uh, John Bunny Knudsen, and myself. Yes. So it was like cool. five of us dudes sitting in a little fishbowl. We called it the fishbowl because it was literally this like, I, I think it was a daycare for overly drunk children because <laughs> it was just, just big giant like circular room with glass windows all the way looking around all inside of us and <laughs> they're just <That's> incredible <laughs> yeah it, it was it was the fishbowl it, 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 it was great it was a weird time it was a fun time but yeah we did all like we did 70 something songs in like seven months it was crazy not even seven months right because you have to submit your game you have to get it in manufacturing yeah get actually all that stuff yeah so yeah. We, we made this shit quick it was rad yeah, I have one more question about just like the you know the charting process of like through the fire and flames. You told me there was like six ver six beta versions that was like harder. Maybe yeah, something like that. Probably. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, wow. I don't know the amount right because it's an iterative process, right. right? You start at one, you start somewhere, and then you kind of refine it over time. You you sit there, you twiddle, you play with it. Um, our, what wound up become the practice tool was essentially our dev tool. It, right it was yep. like okay i want to go jump to this section test this okay cool um uh and like i iterate through that way and definitely it started out overcharted <laughs> and that's something funny to kind of say wow. for one of the most overcharted songs probably ever put in a video game wow <laughs> also speaking of some 
weird starting decisions of Valkyrie Fire and Flames. What the hell is up with Bridge 1, What the, and So Far Away 3? Oh, yeah, the uh, Red Snake. Red oh, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, it's it's note for note, baby. All right. Get, oh yeah. my god! Hey, respect. It's, wow. It's note for note. I I Ew. got so much. Reds. I got so much shit for the intro. Oh, that's they don't even play that. That's that's a, that's a that's a keyboard. Yeah, that was a huge I've huge thing back in the day. Actually, seen them in concert. They do play that. It's a Spanish guitar. Sorry. <laughs> that, that was the number one thing. Everyone was like, it's a keyboard. It's a keyboard. It's not real. Nah, <laughs> no. It was a, they actually played that. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe instead of uh... recording, it's a keyboard, but I, they, they play it live. So, I don't I... Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds actually... like a Spanish guitar to me. So, Chris, I'm last thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you think the GH3 chart is better or the your Smash Hits chart is better? Well, which one do you think you did better on? I didn't do special. Didn't do special. Uh, that, was, that wasn't me. It, it was no, Beanox. It was Beanox. It, that was a Beanox. It was Beanox? Yes, that's it was all Beanox. Oh my god, that's some bullshit. Actually, no, I, I was, 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 was actually upset about that. I was actually upset about that. I was. Uh, upset, about that. I was. Uh, I'm now, upset about that. I thought you did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but now I look back on it, I'm not, not, not as upset anymore, right? Like, I was working on... What was I working on Metallica at the time? Smash Hits or something? Or Van Halen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. I was working on something around that time, right? Like, I can't oh touch God. and do everything. It would have been nice if Activision didn't just release 80,000 Guitar Hero games in the yeah. span of three years yeah, and murder the franchise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been nice. But I can't fault them on that company. You got to make money. I faulted you know them what? back then, you but know you know, what, Chris? you kind of grow up and understand things a little more. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Chris? At least you weren't harmonics when they were releasing track packs on the Xbox and on the PlayStation 3 and others. Like, it was a lot. The PlayStation 2. Like, they released, you know, the fucking g disc the, versions. The the discs, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, I wanted to uh, continue with your sharding on Guitar Hero 3, and I'm going to ask this because I'm genuinely interested. Do you work on any of the DLC tracks? Um, me? I did the Dragon For one of the Dragon Force DLC tracks. Um, I can't remember which one though. I'd have to hear what the names of the songs are again. Heroes of Our Time, Operation Ground Up Pound, uh, Revolution Death Squad. Uh, I think I did Revolution Death Squad. I think that was the best one. The one I did. All right, that was the one, one part. That was the best chart in the pack. All right. Heroes of Not our easy. time is Heroes of Our Time is a bit undercharted. Like I have my own Heroes of Our Time chart, and uh, <laughs> I tried my best to do note for note, and it's got to really overcharted in uh, a lot of places. Uh, of course, you, you probably don't know what it looks like, but uh, I don't no. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an unknown charter, okay. But uh, yeah. um, but but uh, DLC wise. I'm sure I did. I don't remember though. Like I think I did one of the No Doubt songs. Uh, I, th I, uh, I think I did one of the. Uh, was it, was it Soundgarden? Was there when there was Soundgarden pack? I think that was something in Warriors. That was Warriors of Rock. Rock. Yeah, Warriors of Rock. Oh, maybe. Yeah. It's, just okay. yeah. It, it's been a long time. Uh, yeah. I, I I did I did the the I only did a couple of G for VH G, main GH3. I did a couple of the main game songs. Like I did Talk Dirty to Me. Uh, I did Knights of Sidonia. I did. Uh, uh, I, 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 I would have to look up a list, but with, then in the like the the special bonus songs, since I was the last hire, I kind of I was kind of delegated to more of the bonus songs. Um, and I, I did you do NCP Raiders? Music I'd never heard of. Uh, I think I did. Which one is that one? Helicopter or whatever. That one's on a final score. Oh, that's oh, the um, that's the uh, song. I th yeah, I think I did do that one. Yeah. yeah, I think I did do that one. I think. Oh yeah. I didn't yeah. steal did anyone else's know? thunder. Okay, okay. Did Did you also do take this life? Yes, I did do take this life. That one I do know. Oh, I did. Yes, that was the first song that actually kicked my ass, and I thought I was good at the game at the time, and then like oh, wait. There's, a, there's a tournament, and I went and I got my ass beat. At I got which were I lost. I lost that tournament because the guy knew take this life. And I oh, didn't. this is the inflamed songs. No, I did not do this. Sorry. What about oh, the way okay. it ends? What about the way it ends? 
The way it ends. The, I, I the, 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 right? the, uh, the old YouTube channel, the video game music channel. Uh, does I think that's a complete channel. list of, yeah, my yeah. video game music channel, yeah. No, I didn't do the way it ends either. Okay. Also, who did a player of the refugee, one of the weirdest charts <laughs> in the whole game? <laughs> that one is my buddy Jeffrey Inkle, the one who passed away. Uh, he had, uh, he also came from Score Hero. He had a very, I loved his style of charting. He he tried to do very, I would say he, was try, he tried to be very artistic with his five notes that he had, you know, uh, available to it, him. It makes sense. I, lo I loved his tracks. He also did clips of Dover, which was uh, it's still one of my You know what? He's redeemed. All time. He's redeemed, yeah, for, redeemed for Prayer of the Refugee. I'm not it's the biggest fan song. of Prayer of the Refugee, but now it makes sense Same. that he yeah. also did also, uh, Before I Forget. Yeah. Also, my condolences. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Also, uh, who also did a dumb one down to Georgia? That was John Bunny Knutson. That was that 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 one was him. Devil went down to Georgia with John Bunny Knutson. That was a different uh, different guy. Same with Before I Forget. The uh, Jeff Wrinkle didn't do uh, Before I Forget. So I wanted to now no, continue no. with the cool. next with the next installment, which is Guitar Hero Aerosmith. So I wanted to ask, what was your experience working with the band itself, and uh, how and what songs did you chart for that for that game? Oh fuck, I don't know. By by Guitar Hero Aerosmith, I was so drenched in liquor that my liver no longer properly worked. Uh, my brain, at the very least, didn't. <laughs> so I honestly I blocked out a lot of Guitar Hero Aerosmith. I personally I don't want to crap on Aerosmith. I love their music, uh, but I just I did not enjoy working on that game very much. It was it was the easiest game. It was weird. Serious. It was weird. I had nothing to do with its difficulty. I think I was just kind of like riding the high off of Guitar Hero 3, which was very eclectic and had lots of like very interesting things. And then we went sort of into a, a specialized thing that had mostly classic rock, right? Which I love classic rock, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just there was something about working on that specific game that was like, this is cool, this is great, but... It, it it wasn't the same as working on Guitar Hero three, and it wasn't the I totally, same as totally going to World Tour or going to Metallica, right? Like, uh, Metallica is my favorite band of all time, so being able to work on that game, and I will touch on that a little later. But when it comes yeah. to Guitar Hero Aerosmith, I, I I I actually don't honestly remember much, and it was such a fast process. Um, that game came out oh, quick. Oh, actually, I just I just, I just, I just had flashbacks of Mama. Yeah. Was it Mama Fed or Mama Kid? Mama Kin, I worked on that song. I know, I remember I did that song. <laughs> I, uh, okay, I just got, I just, uh, I just thought of it uh, about now. So, um, since we're going to through uh, uh, World Tour, which is pretty much the first, the first band-based game for Guitar Hero, since it was a response mm -hmm. to Rock Band, I wanted to talk about a specific mocap session that you did on, on Guitar Hero Three, or well, Guitar Hero Three on 2007. And it Will, was, come on, buddy. It was on. Bulls on Parade, and you were the base mocap. Oh yeah, I want to ask. Yep. Uh, what can you provide more detail or context of what was supposed to be uh, happening there? Was Guitar Hero three supposed to be a uh, full band, or uh, well, not full band, but like fully mocap, like how Aerosmith will become the first to later turn into World Tour, if anything. I Hey, I honestly don't know what contextually they were aiming for. They might have been trying to explore new tech. Um, I know for sure that we used that mocap session and we we trimmed bits of the mocap data into individual looping idols, right? And we were able to trigger those different looping idols and different animations in our note tracks, right? To have the uh, have different movements happen throughout the songs. But you'll definitely see throughout GH3 there's a lot of the same repeating animations and stuff like that that happen like uh, it's world a tour as well band or whatever yeah so it's it, i don't i don't honestly i don't remember too much what the contextual like why we were doing it i just remember being absolutely thrilled to be able to be doing it because it was just such a like i felt like i was living the rock star life at that point right i was just doing all this really cool stuff and it was exciting yeah mocap was still like brand new at that point yeah. too like yeah, we yeah. weren't using it much in games at that time. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now that we're going through World Tour, so I wanted to ask about 
uh, note tracking not only guitar and bass, but now note tracking the 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 vocals and the drums, drums. and vocals. Uh, so, mm. so uh, is it true that Andy Gentile, uh, or as no, now known as Andy Gentile, yeah, or Gentile? I'm sorry. Um, it yep. worked on the note tracking for the drums on the world tour, and yes, and... he was he was the he he on world tour. He did a lot of the drum tracking. I switched over to drum tracking at the very tail end of World Tour into Metallica as well because I had just kind of been like, I've done the guitar thing, I want to do something different. Um, and then he did such a, like, hey, he's an amazing drummer. Like, you guys all probably know uh, from his time uh, in the band uh, in Endless Sporadic, uh, as well as just, like, he has a Twitch channel um, that he does a lot of drumming on. I don't know if he still does it, but he was doing it for quite a while. Talented, just absolutely amazingly talented man. And uh, being able to work under him, I learned a ton of stuff on, about drums. Like I, I, I became almost, almost a drummer. I will never call myself a drummer because I'm not. I'm still the 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 best word that w way that they describe my drumming was a pair of sneakers in a dryer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's fair, fair. But I I learned so much from the guys. It's amazing, the amazing, amazing drum note tracker. So and uh, right. so I think he did most of the drum mocap too. Yeah, uh, uh, going forward, yeah. So I wanted to ask, what uh, what songs do you remember starting for um for World Tour? Was it Satch Boogie? Do you do the Jimi Hendrix song? Oh, so man. Let me just look up a song list real quick. It'll help me oh, out. There's, here. there's, there's eight, eighty six albums. Uh, eighty six songs. songs. World Tour was like uh, the blowout game. Like, oh yeah, I'm holding. I'm also holding a World Tour guitar right now. Speaking of, I did be. So from what I remember, looking through this list here, I'll just list them as I go through. I remember for sure I did beat it. Um, oh, wow. Sick. Did you do a Scream Ain't Fire? I I did feel the pain by Dennis R. Jr. I did Flow Down by Mattis right. Mouse. Right. Scream Ain't Fire. I did it on the tiger. Oh yes, I did. I did actually the scream of fire. Like what? What was that band? Um, Love from a Valentine. Yes, yeah. I did that. Yes, yes, I did do that one. I I loved I love working that on that song. I never even I never even heard of that band before, and I was like, oh, this is sick. I think I did the kill. Don't hold me to that, but I think I did the kill by uh, Thirty Seconds to Mars. Dude, BYOB. Dude. No, I didn't do BYOB. I did Love Me Two Times by the Doors. Ding, da, ding, da, ding, oh, ding, ding, ding. LB, I LB, I cast. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I did Mr. Crowley. I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. Also, what about it's LB, I LB, I cast? Uh, which one? LB, I LB, I cast the Mars Volta song. Oh, I don't think I did that one, no. Uh, I think I did Ramblin' Man by the Allman Brothers. It's been so long. I did. I'm pretty sure I did Schism by Tool, though. Did pretty you do sure. Hot for Teacher? No, I did not do Hot for Teacher. No. Uh, I did Sweet Home Alabama. No one wanted to do that. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it's a pretty fun chart. I like it. Yeah. It's a pretty fun yeah, chart. I, I, I tended to get thrown the songs no one else wanted to do because of the seniority pick. Like I was kind of lower because I was one of the last. Why nobody to... wanted to do Sweet Home Alabama? Maybe because it was a live track. Is that is that why it was like? I, that? It might have been honestly. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm more the Midwestern like country boy like born and raised. So it was like perfect. Yeah, I, I enjoyed perfect. that. I that enjoyed that song. Oh, oh, I did too much, too young, too fast. Oh Ooh, god, I, I did fucking did love airborne. That's a fun I did one. Today by the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, Classic. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I actually, have a, I actually have a story behind I did not do Crazy Train, no. Crazy Train was actually done in GH3. Like it was actually one of the first songs no, I believe they did it. as a I test. Believe it. Oh, they did yeah. it as a test. Like as uh, it wasn't even any of the note trackers. They didn't even have note trackers yet. One of the producers, I believe it was Randy Guillot, uh did that track. Um I, I believe it was revamped with modern design like rules that we had put into place yeah yeah but uh was credit, on the... credit where credit is due i believe it was randy de Gio or andy uh, uh, so randy de Gio did one alan flores did one of the first three and then uh david rowe who was the audio director 
or uh, or audio lead did the third one um i can't remember what the other two were that were done but there were three of them i believe we messed up and we shipped with them in the di on the disc in like uh on one of them because i remember i remember someone being like oh shit the audio files are still there or something like that wow. when we ship the game. And obviously that would be bad, but the, you would have to like reverse engineer and hack the game, which you guys obviously did super quick. The score hero community did super quick. They're like, they'll never get our encryption key to our audio. But we also, I believe if I remember correctly, shipped with the encryption key in, in a string form in the damn. Wow. Oh. So I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> well, that, there you go. I guess uh, I guess there's that, yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> oh, could you speak on any other, like, cut songs from, like, any of the yeah. Guitar Hero games that yeah. you've worked so, on? Up until World oh, Tour, at least. Apparently, like, the song oh. Unchained was in GH3. Yeah, as, so it was, like, in a script file. Wesley uh, writes that... Oh, Unchained by... Uh... Hang on, I'll sorry ask a question. Uh, there's an uh, there's oh, a sorry. file called Unchained.fsb.sen and on the PS3 as well as well. Do you know what that song was? That song supposed to be in Guitar Three, maybe? Uh, because it's... Uh, I, I, it might have been. Um, is that Unchained? Is that the uh, Fleetwood Mac song? I think it is. It, I thought Unchained it was the melody. Van Halen one for a sec. Oh, it might have been the Van Halen one. I honestly don't remember. I just remember. That there was, it, and I, I, I easily blame the like just the tight time windows that we shipped these games and making a brand new game that NeverSoft was doing, um, that, did that that these things accidentally got shipped on, you know, out with it, right? But uh, I, I don't exactly remember what exactly it was. I just remember there was these things that happened. God, cool. So okay, so now m moving on from World Tour. Where you go into probably like the personally, I think this is like the second best Guitar Hero game in my opinion. It's Guitar Hero Metallica because my goodness, the amount of stuff that was added before Guitar Hero Five is insane. Actually, we're you know there's a that we literally ported all the Guitar Hero Metallica songs to World Tour PC, so it's literally just now a PC port of Guitar Hero Metallica. If you really think about it, and Van Halen, only, only that we don't have cam pulls, so you know who cares? Uh, yeah, but we got all the menus plus, to to say the least. Which is, I actually wanted to talk about who came up with the idea of adding Expert Plus, the double bass edition on Guitar Hero Metallica, and then on to the next. It just that had to happen, like. You don't make a metal game with drums and not have two kick pedals like that. That was just that that had to happen. That was one of our very first like, hey, this is the this is what we must do. We must have two kick pedals. We will not make a metal game and only track half of the kicks. Right. We, we good, like good, good policy. I like that. I don't know whose it was. Maybe it was I, I, if I was like have to pick somebody out of a hat, I would say it was Andy Andy Gentili. Right. That 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 was like, hey, we got to do this, like, because he's the resident drummer. He was the guy that like uh, helped drive all of our drum kit design and our note charting rules for drums and all that stuff. So, if anybody that I could think of, I would say it was probably him. So I wanted to mention because Guitar Metallica really has uh, well before Warriors of Rock, obviously had a very intense song set list. Uh, to be honest, so and which I want to ask, so um. Do you remember who, by any chance, did the Death Magnetic DLC uh, in the day? Because I know that was Guitar Hero 3 first, then World Tour, and then oh, it was changed. I, uh, Metallica, and then 5, and all that stuff. So that was, that was an incredible experience for me, as a Metallica head, as a huge fan. We got an early mix of Death Magnetic in the No studio. wonder it sounds better. No wonder it sounds better. <laughs> there, there, there were there were like audio, uh, audio, um, audio articles written about all this, like the comparisons and how the guitar one sounds better. So it is not, it's not like a mystery or anything. Um, audio engineers <laughs> agree, um, <laughs> but it was it was incredible to be able to be one of the first people in the world, like get this stuff in and not just hear the songs. But hear them separated, like be able to hear just James singing, Stamps. just Kirk playing guitar, just fucking Lars playing uh, playing drums, Trujillo just doing what he does best and just beating that bass around. Like it was an it was it was an amazing experience to work on that stuff. Um, I I I worked on several of the songs. Um, do you do one? Tell me, do you do one? I th 
There's one like by Metallica, like one one because yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, no, I did uh, not get a chance. That is my favorite right. song by Metallica, hands down. Same. But Same. I did the drums for one, but I uh, the guitar got passed off to. I believe I remember giving it because uh, I, I gave a lot of shit because there's a there's like an open E that gets hit and I'm like yeah make that an open note and they're like now <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> like, because open E is used a lot in in one uh on the like the, the low E string um yeah. and I, I think also, the person who tracked that was uh fuck I see his name so, Tony Solis I believe it was Tony Solis that that tracked that one yeah did you uh, do also, master puppets. No, Master of Puppets was uh, John Bunny Knudsen. Also, I have a question. Now that you mentioned open I notes, what everyone else did but me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now that you mentioned open notes, uh, what was the what was your this? Oh, we're returning to World Tour, but this applies pretty much to every game after World Tour. What uh, what was the decision uh, to make open notes exclusive to bass players only? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I forget I the reasoning that, behind yeah. that. Yeah, that's a great question, and I don't remember fully the reasoning behind it. I think it was something that we did. We wanted to do a, a differentiator, right, between the two styles of of, of play, and yeah. so we. I, I I believe that was the case, if I remember correctly, where we were like, okay, we'll do this for bass. So bass feels different than playing guitar in in the game, right? To differentiate them out more because previously there was no difference right you're, you're just playing the exact same guitar with the exact same notes coming down the screen it didn't quite feel the same it it, it all felt quite kind of hom homogenized right uh so i believe that that's why we did that believe i get i get i get where you're coming from that would give me a uh question pertaining to open note design um and that why weren't open note sustains a thing until way later down the road? That, I, if I remember correctly, that was a text issue, tech uh, tech issue, where the the we, we were just adding stuff on top, right? We weren't reinventing the wheel. We were just kind of putting stuff in, and we had small time windows to make these games, right? We were shipping a game pretty much every six seven months, so we kind of worked in baby steps where we would just kind of get an early iteration of an idea in. And then by the next game, we'd be able to like, aha, we, we can iterate on this now and improve this because we have a little more time to do that and we'll make it even better. Uh, it, it, if you look at a lot of rhythm games that have constant release uh, windows like Dance Dance Revolution, or you go to the Guitar Freak stuff in arcades, right? You'll see that constant iterative growth that doesn't necessarily reinvent the wheel, but continues to kind of just grow the technology and make it better. Oh, also, yeah. another question. Another question. So, because World Tour added a lot of new things to charting, like extended sustains, tap notes, open notes, uh, why did it get the uh, uh, chord hope was added to the game until Guitar Hero Five? Just another tech thing, right? Like it's it's it's, and when you're when you're making any type of software, um, you you, you run into limitations, and there's a lot of things that you want to do. Because I remember we wanted to do hammer on chords in GH three. Like, well, that was Ooh. one of the things we wanted to do then. And oh. you kind of see in our design, in our charting, that we wanted to do specific things, and it led to some weird struggle. Oh, it uh, led to some other. Water. Oh, uh, uh, what about infinite front end on Guitar Hero 3, if anything? That, uh, yeah, was, bug. that was a bug. Yeah. Now look at this old he man. Was a losing bug? <laughs> yeah, oh, that was a bug. Oh yeah, my that's god. That, 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 that was officially a bug. Oh, we wanted bug. <laughs> So uh we wanted to oh. have from for, for all of my knowledge that new. was a bug. For all of my knowledge that was a bug because I, I was involved a lot in the early process of kind of sitting down with uh Scott Pease, who is like the the big head producer on the Guitar Hero on Guitar Hero Three and Alan Flores, and we kind of sat sat me down in a room because I was, at the time I was hired, I was the best Guitar Hero player, hands down. Like, I was the best one in the studio. I was able to play all expert songs in GH1 and 2, almost like gold everything, right? I, was, that, nice. not, I came in as I came in as the, that 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 uh, community oh, hire that's just really good oh, at the God. game, right? Yeah. That, that, that was my credentials, actually. Somebody mentioned earlier, like, getting hired without credentials, no college, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, he's just the asshole, you know, he five-starred everything and can do all this stuff, so fuck it. He's, 
he, he could do the work and he's and he's got the he's got the culture fit of the studio which was i think just at that time a, a happy just like willing to do anything and work hard kind of person you know, so, you know um speaking of being the and, best player around the studio i think this, uh, i forgot to ask this but um, when the Fire and Flames got first to have seed by I Am Chris for Life, do you guys ever contacted him or do you guys ever contacted Danny Phenom because he was pretty big in the back in the day? Uh, definitely. I mean, I at least reached out on things like Score Hero and talked to these guys all the time, right? Like, okay. when I got hired in from Score Hero, I did not just, like, disappear from Score Hero. I was, like, a community guy for Neversoft. I was a liaison. Like, I was posting on Score like Hero a community all the time. Manager. Like we, a community manager. Essentially, I was essentially one of the first community managers in video games before they really had online community managers and forums. Uh, nice. I, I, I I got to post news and I got to post t t uh, hint, the hints at what's coming next and sort of leak some information. Um, it was always properly of the, like, okay, yeah, you can kind of hint at that. I never went outside of the realm of what I was supposed to do, right? But um, uh, we also even like, especially in the earlier years, we brought Score Hero in. I know we did. We brought uh, like the top uh, the top posters and of Score Hero uh and the like the big youtubers of the time into neversoft and like uh I, there's i think that's one of the videos uh, that uh you guys are talking about before where there's you kind of see like a, a version of uh through the fire and flames that's kind of older uh that somebody's playing when we like kind of did the announcement for through the fire and flames it was actually through score hero they're the ones who got to kind of blast out that, that was coming out they broke the news yeah, yeah. and so and that was, was huge for score hero very huge yeah for them yeah. So, uh, and so, yeah, that's that's essentially, yeah, that. So, so before cool. we head out into the other games, so I want to talk about a very specific cut song from Guitar Metallica, which is Angel of Death by Slayer. Did you by any chance have involved mm -hmm. with sharding it, or was it somebody else? Uh, I believe it was my buddy Brian Marvin. He did the he did Slayer's Raining Blood on Guitar Hero Three. Uh, so nice. he kind of had a he he he's the originator of the oh, Thunder cool. Chord. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! The, the five oh, note like just, just so cool. hold all your fingers on the button like the this, why, was that a, why was that a thing in smash hits that made no again that was beanox's choice but the, the yeah it was the, beanox the it was the uh just a three note chord so it's nothing really yeah uh, so uh, red yellow blue but uh that shard is is known to exist right at least no sharded or I have no clue. I have no clue. Wait, so the Thunder Chord wasn't a five button chord? No, guitar it guitar was a three note chord, yeah. but on a Smash but, it Guitar Three was a red yellow blue. Then Smash oh. Hits had the five note. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay, was well, there was a song on Guitar Hero Three that had a five note chord. There wasn't any. The there note. wasn't any. Are you sure? No. Oh, there was no, a four no, note chord no, on Go That Far. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was me, by the way. Go That Far was me. Yeah. No. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. Okay, so this is where <laughs> that broke a lot of people in one day. I, I, I think it was just breaking rules and like setting new uh, standards. I That's guess so That's funny. So That's so funny. That's fucking gold. So at this point in 2009, uh, you have uh, another types of uh, guitar hero games that wasn't even made by Neversoft. That was much more borrowed from the engine. You have Beanox with Smash Hits. You have Underground Development doing Van Halen, and then you have By Curious Visions doing the Nintendo DS games. And you know you, you have all yep. that stuff. So I wanted to ask much more about the mainline uh, other games like uh, Smash Hits and Van Halen. Do you have do you have any sort of involvement? Do you told the these guys, hey, do you, you're supposed to shard the guitar this certain way, or I don't know if you did have any contacts with them. Not really. Uh, I did help with the Game Boy games actually a little bit. Um, I helped yes. like test the I yeah the or DS yeah sorry the DS games. I helped mm -hmm. test the prototypes. I helped give them a little bit of notes and feedback, but overall I didn't do much there. Um in terms of Van Halen, I helped a little bit with feedback. Uh only a little bit. My leads uh the Jeffrey Inkle, uh he definitely gave a lot of he would he was always swamped with work or the leads always were swamped with work because they would be throwing not only we're doing our work right but they would get sent the tracks from these other studios and we would like he would review them essentially and look at them and be like hey maybe don't do this like it it wasn't a it wasn't like we controlled the work right like but essentially like we're the main developers right we want to make sure that 
things that go inside of the Guitar Hero universe kind of line up with what we're doing in the main SKUs on like the Xbox 360 and all that stuff, right? Like the 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 the, the main ones. So we had some involvement in terms of reviews. I didn't really though, uh, and, and feedback. But at the end of the day, it was more of us just kind of giving ideas and feedback. It wasn't necessarily us controlling it or saying no, you must do this this way or that way. They had a they had mostly the freedom to do and make the games that they wanted to make, which is great. Their own thing. As it should be. You don't want to be controlled. You want to make a video game. Fair. You want to make a video game, right? So, uh, from my, uh, from all my knowledge, we helped, but we never really like uh like were involved in the development like actually evolved yeah okay that's pretty um, interesting too do you want to ask something alec uh if anything yeah i i, I know we got kind of sidetracked when i asked this because you guys started talking about like unchained or whatever but yeah, yeah. i wanted i really wanted to know like any if you're able to speak on any songs that were supposed to be in guitar hero in general that never made one one that i still wish uh, it's a game. It's a full game, really, that never got made. That we were in the process of beginning to make. Ban Hero Two, like we yeah. were in the process of oh. making Ban Hero Two. Yeah, I was weak. And someone in the chat I, mentioned I, that. I love Ban Hero. I loved it because by that time I had ripped off my metalhead skin and had just become a I love all music kind of person and just like working on guitar really helped me open up and like bring other new styles of music into my life and by that point working on Band Hero was a treasure I loved it so much and when we were going to work on Band Hero 2 there's that song (sighs) hold on let me me get the name of the song oh I want to hear it oh my gosh Focus by Hocus Pocus, where he's like yodeling, yodeling, like we were trying, we were trying so hard to get that song. Like that was on our top of our list. We all, all the, because what they would do when we were starting a new game and with Band Hero, especially, they're like, hey guys, we want you guys to scour the internet, go on YouTube, look at music videos, find songs that really work for us. And during this time, it was probably like 2009, this song exploded out of nowhere into people's ears again for 30 years later, 20 years later, right? And we were just like, we love this song. It's got yodeling. It's got rad guitar. Oh, it's got rad job. This is a band hero song. If I would have made we band any hero track. like a goaded game. That would have been <laughs> band hero. It would have been amazing. Yeah. And, and we weren't yeah. doing it ironically because, like, oh, it's yellow. We're like, this would be an amazing challenge. This would be That's such incredible. a hard song. It'd be like a 10 on vocal expert difficulty, right? Like, it would have been insane. Wow. And we had, we had, so we had a custom repository server where we just had made, whenever we were in the downtime, we just pick a song and make it in, in, in our engine, right? So we had hundreds, right. maybe thousands of ga- uh, songs just kind of note tracked, official note tracks, essentially without masters, but to MP3 is like everyone else was doing at the time, right? To kind of just no, RNA no, and kind of figure out what we wanted. One of my I favorite ones was done that. by my best buddy, the late Jeffrey Inkle, where he note tracked the intro to Full House <laughs> for a oh, full band. This is a really great segue to go into. So I know that you went into Band Hero, but I wanted to talk about Guitar Hero 5, which is a new engine. You guys have a totally new art style. You have motion blur on. It's not... It's not Vocal oh, cords are added. Same engine. Yeah. And the same engine. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a much better engine than World Tour, that's for sure. So, but... It, as, it continued to improve. Sure. So, yeah. The, the, so, this is something interesting that I wanted to ask. So, in our Alan Flores interview, we asked him if by any chance did he know about the the... The secret, well, not, well, cut content of, uh, oh my god, what was that fucking band? It was... Led Zeppelin? Led Zeppelin. Yes, and it was, uh, it, it was like live renditions of Black Dog and I think another song, and recently it has been ported to Xbox and PlayStation 3 by, I think it was Addy Mills, who's been currently working on importing all the unexportable songs recently on Warriors of Rock, which kudos to him because that's a really impressive job that he's doing right now. So I wanted to ask, do you remember by any chance about Led Zeppelin on Guitar Hero 5? Because those those were found on the Wii discs, not on the Xbox or PS3. But they were all full band charted, that's for sure. What what did Alan say? <laughs> uh, somebody's going to be getting in trouble pretty much for... Uh, yeah. Sir. <laughs> that's yeah, that's pretty much what I he said. Know. 
I don't know what I can say, right? Like, I don't know, even 15 years later, what... I'd, there's still an NDA that's really, like, attached to me, right? Like, and this is one of those things where I can say we were exploring full band game options, mm-hmm. okay? And it's not... It wouldn't be a surprise to anybody that one of the most influential full band... Like, bands of rock and roll would be one of the ones that we were considering, uh, that we were pushing out to even and reaching out to. Like, I I don't don't know how far that would have gotten with any one of those bands that we were doing it, but but maybe Led Zeppelin was one of them. I, I, I throw my hands in the air and say there was several bands that we reached out to and we did full treatments to show those bands what they could look like inside of a video game that was based off of them maybe they were one of them i don't know so, also i have a question now. i, I have a question <laughs> right now how did you get the license to tool oh man uh so that that's a I, I don't know the full story to this but i have an interesting anecdote that came out of it when the, i i know that they did jump through hoops with tool like tool was very Tool uh, uh, has always been really tight with their music. Um, I get it. That's uh, why I asked it. Yeah. Uh, what they wound up doing, though, that I remember seeing was very interesting. Um, the dude, when he came to deliver to the stems, he came with the full-on fucking dude in the suit, fucking uh, holding a briefcase, handcuffed to his hand, the full nine yards, in, because inside the briefcase was the all the master's for the tool song and even more so on top of that they didn't give us if i remember correctly only one person in the entire studio was allowed to be in there uh if i remember correctly it was david rowe and he worked and sat with them and mixed the songs there and then they got the fuck out with the, the masters and the way that they had us do it if i remember correctly and you guys might know better than us is those masters are our splits in the game aren't fully split out they've got the the other parts of the music kind of bleeding into the other yeah uh, I, get the it, I, I, yeah. I get it uh, and so uh, i i i it was it was a very like secretive very very protective uh which is completely understandable uh thing where especially back then no one like digital music was a baby still in 2008 right? Uh, Only 10 years old, maybe a little longer. Uh, Professional digital music being sold was even younger, right? Like, I I don't even think the Apple fucking uh, music store existed in 2000. iTunes was like like just coming out, like when Guitar Theory was becoming a thing. So, people... Yeah, 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 it was afterwards. Pandora... No, I think Spotify might have even been a little later, because I think it was Pandora came out before Spotify did and Pandora I think was like 2007 2008. Um so this whole digital music thing was very new back then. Uh it was a, and it was a very it was very hard to get licenses for people. It was always uh it was always difficult to talk to talk to them uh, but some were so, so on board where they re-recorded old songs they didn't have the masters to anymore, right? Like yeah. which you guys have probably, you know, you you've heard of that uh that story before, but it just depended on the artist, it depended on the situation. I remember Tool being extremely protective of their work, very rightfully so, and that was very interesting to seeing the handcuff suitcase guy walking through the hallway. So I was just like, "What?" I can imagine it's a James Bond movie. <laughs> I can I could definitely see it where they were so protective of everything because uh in a like a behind the scenes video of World Tour, um before uh, I forget who it was in the video who said it, but before World Tour in two thousand eight, the last time they had licensed any of their music was nineteen ninety six, twelve years before that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. Speaking uh do you know anything about uh Guitar Hero Beatles? No. Bye bye, right? Like actual zero nothing. Uh, also, speaking of other me, speaking of other bands that you might have uh, like, one band that I was always very upset never made it to a Guitar Hero game is, of course, ACDC. Like, is there anything about ACDC that's it? We're trying to get ACDC uh, to Guitar Hero. So, something? as you can imagine, we're obviously competing against 
another big giant game developer, EA and uh, Harmonic, Rock right? Yeah, and contracts are Come made, on. and and um, uh, and there. I mean, I think it's the compensation was airborne. Yes, <laughs> we yeah, <did> airborne. <laughs> But I do love ACDC, but like I, my guess would be because Rock Band had gotten maybe gotten to them first or offered them more. I don't know, but uh, th there there were definitely exclusivity contracts and stuff like that. I see. No, I get it. I don't know if Rock Band. I don't know if ACDC had one, but I, it definitely it, it, was. If you like Rock Band, it's the closest thing. Like they had a track pack of the ACDC Live at Donington, nineteen ninety one. So they had a yeah, track pack for that. One of their best albums ever. I love that mm -hmm. that album. So was Guitario uh Raw Chili Peppers becoming a thing or do you know do you don't know anything about that? Again, we reached out to bands. I can neither confirm and deny which ones we reached out to <laughs> and we did stuff on just because I don't know what all I can say because I mean Guitar Hero is not a dead IP. It may come back someday. I hope it comes back good someday. I hope if so you're watching too. Activision or EA, I will quit what I'm doing now and come lead that. I'm, I'm not to join you. I'm about to chart some stuff for an official Guitar Hero game. I fucking love charting custom songs, and I want to join you. Let's let's chart some stuff together, okay? <laughs> Fuck yes. Do you remember what Guitar Hero Five songs you charted back in the day? When uh... let me bring up the song list. Let me bring up the song list. G H Five set list. So that was everything. Point... Died for nothing. Uh, at this point, I will. I by Guitar Hero Five, I was fully on the drum team. I didn't do ah. guitar tracks oh, really after wow. oh. Metallica. Metallica was the last uh, game that I did uh, guitar songs on that I remember. Oh. Then my, I think there was one or two songs where I was just like, I really need to do this song, and they were like, Oh, okay, sure, go for it. But for the most part, I was just happy to be doing the drum stuff. All right, awesome. but. I did the drums to 20th Century Boy by T-Rex. I did... Wow, oh, man. It, when when you're doing drums, it becomes a lot less... Uh, I, I, it's a lot harder to remember because I, all I have most of the times is the drum track soloed out when I'm working on them and stuff like that. So honestly, it'd be a lot... I did Deadbolt by Thrice. Uh, Thrice was one of my favorite Probably songs of uh, bands yeah. in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 90s. I uh, went to a concert... Uh, when I was 14, probably the only concert I went to as a kid was a Thrice concert. I uh, love them. Oh, Thrice early. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think also, it was uh, 99 the... when I saw them, or 98. Also, did you do the yeah, Children 90. of Bottom song? No, no. I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> I, was scared scared brain. Brain. I think I remember who did that one. I can't remember his name now, though. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Old brain is failing me here. Oh, man. Just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, these set lists were getting relatively big by that point. GH5 had 85 songs on it. 80 yeah. plus songs. Yeah. Of rock had the amount of time that we songs. had to work on them didn't change. Right? The amount of change, the time that we had to work on them didn't change. We still only had like six to seven six to eight months probably per game to essentially go gold and get it out the door and so it could get manufactured so we weren't exactly especially at this point we were just a farm mill we were just pumping yeah. shit out like it was a lot harder to grow the same sort of connections that we had with the G like with the first couple games where things were a little more slower we had less people we got a little more intimate with the work that we were doing but at least for me, I don't want to speak for everyone else, but by that time, I became more of a just like, all right, get it out, get it done, move on, get it out, get it done, Going, move on. going with the notions, right? You know, just yeah. this is stuff that needs to be done. I feel like that's, when I played Guitar Hero 5, that's how it felt to me. I was just like, oh, cool, visuals are great, but is this game groundbreaking? <laughs> Probably not. You know, I they, should, got I... it out. they got it out. They got it out. But a lot of that, you know, yeah, that a lot of that comes down you know? to the release schedule and how much time we had to work yeah. on it, right? Like, if we had another six months, man, the amount the amount of effort and passion that we could have poured into it would have been that much higher. But you know, you know, what? that's speaking that's of, the way game dev is. Speaking of sharding, um, do you remember what programs you used for doing the note tracks? Was it Reaper or was it Dog? Sonar. 
Yeah, like, the Stoner like, Cakewalk, if I if I remember correctly. This user interface looks correct. Yeah. Yeah, the Stoner yeah. Cakewalk. Uh, some people use Pro Tools if they're doing more of the audio editing stuff along with it. But for the most part, us us charters use Stoner. Uh, cool. So Very cool. Uh, I guess we can... I, I also have another question. Uh, I have another question about Guitar Hero 5. So... What was so uh, from what I, from what I understand about Guitar Hero Five is that the set list was very mixed. From what I've heard from a lot of people, they don't like the Guitar Hero Five set list. So because it had a lot of diversity, there was Bob Dylan in it. There was rap music like hey, Feel Good Ink. Bob Dylan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was Feel Good Ink by Gorillaz, and then there was uh, Public <laughs> Enemies, Bring the Noise. So I mean, uh, if you look at if you look at set list. If you look at the set list, like, and you look at Tony Hawk, you look at the games NeverSoft makes. This is a this is a NeverSoft set list, right? This is uh. this is a this is a diverse uh, listing of music that touches. A, a we a it feels like a NeverSoft set list to me, right? Maybe just uh. because of my time there and whatnot. But like, if you look at Tony Hawk, not everything in Tony Hawk's set list is a skater song, right? There's 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 uh, there, I mean, it is, but like, there's different cultural, uh, uh, the groups and like, um, God, what are the words I'm looking for right now? There are different types of skaters, right? There's skaters that are, I'm listening to Anthrax and I'm like rash, like just thrash metal and all that stuff. There is more of the skaters that are like, I'm into hip hop and R and B, and it's like you try to reach a mass audience. Whatever your audience listens to, we try to bring it in. Right, and um, we have a we huge five, audience but... in Guitar Hero with Guitar Hero Five. We just, I think, we just made Band Hero, right? And it kind of opened the door after. to kind of just come out after. Okay, maybe yeah. this was kind of pushing the door into Band Hero. And honestly, I don't yeah. know. I wasn't a part of like an analytics team or anything like that. But maybe they were like, "Hey, all this might be a little too diverse of a set list. We let we, but we could go." we could kind of fork it and say we got band hero, which has the diversity and all the pop and all the other fun stuff. And we just have fun with this one. And then here's guitar hero, which kind of focuses more on the rock side of things. I mean, it, maybe that was the thought process. Cause if you look at guitar hero, uh, warriors of rock, it, it, it does go and lean more back into the heavier, like the more rock, uh, centric set list with less outliers. Oh, th hearing this information, it makes me appreciate guitar Hero five set list even more. Because uh, when the when the game came out, I really did like the set list for how much filler it had, and that because it had uh, you know rap and Bob Dylan in it, you know it was very diverse mm -hmm. and it had a lot of filler in it. But hearing this information really makes me appreciate it more. Like this was like your personal set list. Like this was like you said, never saw set list. So like this is the set list you guys wanted, like your personal set list. Oh yeah, almost always was. We we. We had a very heavy hand in what went into the game. The trackers, the production team, uh, all the way up into, like, it's never saw, for the most part, got to pick and choose what we had in the game. If I remember correctly, Activision didn't really step in much because we were just doing a good job, right? We were, <laughs> I, I know once in a while I think they had some deals where it was just like, we want to have these songs in here because they'd be good for marketing or whatever, right? That I'm sure that happened. It happens everywhere. But for the most part, we have a heavy amount of control over our set lists. Be before we get into Warriors of Rock, because I want to hear more about... Band Hero. Band Hero. And because a lot of people, mm. including myself, is very mixed with... It's, very, it's, a, it's a very popish set list, and not a lot of people enjoyed it, per se, but... You know, uh, so I want to hear about your opinions about it and what songs that you sharded as well for the game itself, if that's fine. Sure, I can't honestly tell you what I, I charted for that game. I did a lot of songs on it, but they would have been all drums mostly, maybe some guitar. I never touched vocals. Uh, Walking on sunshine. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, like I said, man, it was just go, go, go. We were just constantly making stuff, go, and it's really go. like. The early stuff for me really stuck with me. It was my first job in the game industry, right? I'm making a Guitar Hero game, which I love. So I remember a lot of those songs a lot more that I worked on. But after a while, it was kind of more of a job than a game, right? Uh, which is, you know, uh, how anything kind of winds up. It, it's a job. It's what you do to pay money. You, you work hard at it, right? And uh, over time, I started to look at the songs more as 
check marks on a on a list rather than like oh oh this song oh <laughs> and like I have to listen to all the splits and all the like oh my god you hear this part I had those moments still sometimes don't get me wrong actually probably a lot but it was more of a general package at that point right it wasn't necessarily what I was working on it was more about what we were all doing together. Uh, but in terms of what I thought of Band Hero, I fucking loved it, man. <laughs> I loved it then. We loved it, like the cra- like because it allowed us to kind of express ourselves outside of just like rock. Yeah. It allowed us like to just it. kind of have fun. Fascination, fascination, fascination. It's just the way you feel. I love that song. We love that song. Like the like a, a bunch <laughs> of long haired bearded metal dudes just standing around fascination like and we had a fucking blast with that game. also ymca <laughs> ymca and well, of course and YMCA. kung fu fighting, kung fu fighting. Uh, it, 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 motion it, capture is amazing was, it was an amazing <laughs> time to work on that probably the most fun that we had had since metallica yeah. uh, do you know anything I about the tell. yeah so did you know anything about the no doubt lawsuit um, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> the answer to that is obviously yes. I just don't know anything about it. I mean, it made big news, right? It was a big deal. Uh, but I don't know anything about any of it, right? So, so um, nor, was, nor the was, whole that was out of my mind. That was out of my my reach. <laughs> it, it is nor the whole they're watching here. Uh, it is cool to hear that like Band Hero was like a lot of fun for you guys because like. At the time when I got the game, I was like, dang, how much money were they offered to make this game? But now it seems like almost sort of the opposite. But like you guys, like from what I'm hearing from you, it was like a really fun, it was actually a passion project. And then you were mentioning, like after finding out about Band Hero 2, I'm like, dang, they must have legitimately liked making that game. Oh, we did. And we wanted to make that second one very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so that's really cool. I mean, it, it definitely, it, like, hearing this, like, right now makes me appreciate Band Hero for what it is. Because some people don't even classify Band Hero as a Guitar Hero mm-hmm. game. Like, counting it towards, like, you know, f and all the songs or whatever. They People are like, Band Hero? It's Guitar Hero full series FC, not Band Hero. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't include that in there. But, like, I don't know. Maybe some people would change you their mind. You should, because I don't the know. devs. The devs oh, consider it a, fu- a, a part of our. What part of our, uh, count Band uh, Hero in the Guitar Hero full series FC is a fucking de- degenerate. <laughs> Sorry if I hey, offended man. anyone, but Bad Hero is a like fucking it now. Like a hero, more like. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of Band Hero, you, you, if you remember that I said I didn't like Guitar Hero Five when it came, I, I did like Band Hero when it came up because I knew it was doing its own thing. Like, as a kid, like, I knew if this was a pop version of Band Hero, and I loved it, but of course, so I, I always had that mindset, that, like, some song in Band Hero should have been in Guitar Hero 5, and some uh, questionable songs in Guitar Hero 5 should have been in Band Hero, but any, anyways, it, it's history. So before we head into <laughs> Wars of Rock, Chris, I want to ask, because this is something I always thought uh, of these games, so do you remember how much was the budget for each Guitar Hero game? At least that never stopped. No, I... That was outside of my peon note tracker uh, n- knowledge. Uh, I-, I was just a little guy in a fishbowl getting drunk every day. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Uh, okay, so this is now where we finally segue into the last Guitar Hero uh, title and the Neversoft uh, franchise. So, you know, do, do you ever knew that this was going to be the last Guitar Hero game? Yes, yeah, so this this sucked. Um, we didn't know it was going to be the last, necessarily, but Neversoft, it, 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 we kind of, I think we essentially did kind of know, yeah, because essentially what happened was all of a sudden over the intercoms, we get a big announcement to all meet to in the hallway because Joel would stand up, uh, he'd pull out this chair or something and stand up above everybody and just kind of yell at the top of his lungs, like updates for the studio and everything to, the, to, to everybody. It was always super personal. Joel is absolutely one of the best bosses I ever worked for. Uh, he ran an amazing studio. Um, and he, he, we got this intercom call. I'll come out. It wasn't a normally scheduled one, but I didn't think of anything of it anyways. But then we all go out there and he just starts kind of just giving this talk to us. And he starts like, you just tell he's starting like holding back tears and stuff. And it's just like, we're going to be laying off a ton of people today, essentially. Oh, uh, is what oh, the words. No. And, and it, it was, 
I think the number wound up being like 80 or 90 people or something like that, like half the studio, right? Um, and it was essentially that things were kind of moving around in different directions. And there would be some people that were getting laid off right away. This was the weird part. This was the part that sucked. There were some people that were getting laid off right away. And then there were some people that were getting laid off. <laughs> the lunch menu. I'll get I'll get to that lunch menu in a second. Mm. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh uh there's uh the, so there was people getting laid off right away and then there were some people and i was one of these people that essentially had the grenade with the pin pulled and just we get to hold it in our hands wrap up the game and then uh after we finished diving in the game we would also be laid off as well um uh so it was essentially okay everybody go back to your desks we'll give you hr will give you a call on your phone and uh, if you get a call that sucks. <laughs> sucks to be you right now. <laughs> and they didn't word it like that, but uh, you know, that's, that was the vibe, right? Like, so we went back to our desks, HR was calling people. Everyone's just, it was a very nervous day. It was a rough day for, a, a, obviously, even the people that wound up not being affected by the layoff because your best friends, uh, people that you've sweat with for, and so, in some cases uh, over a decade, because it wasn't just Guitar Hero people that got laid off. It was original Tony Hawk people, uh, people that had been there since damn near the start of the company. It was a big layoff, uh, and, uh, and it it sucked. It was rough. Um, but so we kind of knew that it was it was coming. We knew it was kind of the end of Guitar Hero. We didn't know, no, but it was easy to kind of put those pieces together, right? That at least for NeverSoft, this is the end of that road for us. Dang. Oh, that's one thousand. At least, you, at least you guys. That was two thousand nine. At least you guys left it with a big impact because honestly, Warriors of Rock two thousand ten is, is, is the, in my opinion, the best Guitar Hero game. Not only because of its sellers, but because of the story you guys crafted it, uh, with Gene Simmons being the demigod, uh, the demigod of rock. Rush and uh, and Rush and Rush twenty one twelve. Pretty cool stuff with that as well. Yep. And we it's uh, evident. And, no, it's just guys, pretty much left it, it, it as you I mean we like I said we were holding our grenades in our hands but it wasn't like the kind of developers we were it weren't it wasn't oh we're just gonna like just not care anymore and finish this game and we're done it kind of became a this is the last time it's a swan song then let's make this it right and I feel like the we really did our hero like, ever made from from the very beginning, all the cinematics, the story, the end cinematic with the 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 fucking giant thing eating all the pictures of us or whatever the hell it is, I can't remember at the moment. Oh my but god, that credit scene was genius. The credit scene, it was amazing. Like every single part of it was at like, because there was a lot of people that that were still working on it that weren't getting laid off too, but they still knew like like the the even for the people that weren't getting laid off after they finished the product, you're, you're finishing this for people who had a passion right for what they were doing and so everybody just i i, I yeah you can kind of see it in the work there that it was kind of like we knew and this is this is the, our swan song you guys hey, just sure. was, you guys went all out with it i could tell fucking, so fucking respect My salute you. so relating to, uh, to this game Queen. on score on sco uh score hero uh you were actually asking on the uh on the forums that you, you were asking for literal so song suggestions. Is it true that one of those song suggestions was the reason Black Widow Laporte ended up in Warriors of Rock? Oh, it's quite possible. I honestly don't remember, but that is quite possible. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. So, which is uh, which? I gotta ask: Do you shart uh Black Widow Laporte or the drums? Any part? I'll have to go listen to the song real quick. It's one of the many 93 songs that were charted in that game. 93 songs. Yeah, you Huge can't forget song. Fury of the Storm. Biggest and missing guitar for all the storm. I actually, that was one of the, that was the last guitar track I ever did. Uh, Fury of the Storm. Wow. Oh, it makes storm, perfect yeah. sense because it's a track in Port of Fucking legend. Yeah, I got to do 
If there was only one uh, Dragon Force song, I always got to do the one that was on the game. But the DLC, I obviously couldn't do all three, so I only did the one. I believe it was the Revolution one. Uh, I do mm. not think this is. Uh, yeah, I remember John Five now. I remember this. Uh, I do not think that I worked on this one. Though. The the mm. Black Widow report. What about Sudden Death by Megadeth? The new the song that hasn't come out yet. The one they literally wrote for that game. Yeah. Yeah. Tailored. I don't think that was so, like an exclusive. Twenty one twelve. Said it was like exclusive to the game or something. I did like that. nothing on twenty one twelve. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, what about Sudden Death by Megadeth? No, yeah. no, I don't think so. Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Ah, uh, there's I don't there's not much drums in Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody also have so little guitar that you have to charge the piano on the guitar charts. Yeah. That's true. I mean, we we always kind of didn't care about that, right? Like, uh, like I just I told you, I, I charted the uh, the synth, right? Do 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 do. Yeah, I get it. Like, yeah, I, I didn't. I I never cared, right? Because I came from a, ben- a Bamani background. I I spent most of my teenage years in arcades, playing DDR, playing Guitar Freaks. Like, uh, I love Prapper the Rapper. Like anything that had a rhythm element to video game, it was like the complete best mixture of my two worlds and so i came at it when i came into guitar hero my method was not realism or guitar playing but more i just it's want just to feel fun. really cool playing this thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now that so now after the game was released now you had the the dlc being released and after that it was pretty much done un- done for guitar hero at least on our side yeah. and then uh, before DLC uh, was probably all handled externally, probably um, you know. at uh, no Vicarious Visions. I yeah, think. Vicarious. yeah, there was no Vicarious Visions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because nope, never mind. <laughs> I, I again, I don't know what I can divulge because NDA NDAs are very smart. long lasting. Smart, this man is smart. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, wait, can you tell us that? So, I don't but, to, but, but, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah. So before uh, Guitar Hero Live, uh, unfortunately, back in 2014, NeverSoft merged with Infinity Ward. So pretty much that was the end for NeverSoft. But then, um, in 2015, Rock Band 4 and Guitar Hero Live was released. So I wanted to, I want, I want to know about your opinions on Guitar Hero Live as a reboot with the whole six frets on the on the guitar and the. Uh, the whole concept of Guitar Hero TV, which is now pretty much brought back by a community called Guitar Hero TV Reloaded, which is right now available to play on on an emulator on Wii U, believe it or not. So I want to hear about your experience on that game, if anything, if you ever touched it. I did. I was very excited for both Rock Band 4 and Guitar Hero Live. Um... No disrespect to the developers. Freestyle made some they, they made a really great game, but the set list wasn't for me. Like that's that's Understand. just the best way I can put it. The set list I did not care I for. Um I love Screw Lucky Tar Hero game. Oh yeah, you got Bucky Lucky Tar Hero game, right? But it was just it was uh, I don't know. It was I, I feel like they made a great game and they did the right things, but they kinda <sighs> That's not what Guitar Hero is. That's not yeah. the energy. That's the best way I can word it. Is that's not the energy of what Guitar Hero is. It's not the identity of Guitar Hero. Uh, and if they would have named that Band Hero Live, there you go. You made it. Like, but like, it just with calling it Guitar Hero Live, I was just like, uh, I don't know. And even then, it didn't have enough Band Hero songs. Like, pop, fun, poppy, catchy. It was very. Uh, I don't know. It just wasn't a set list for me. I didn't enjoy the game. I, I, I thought, you know, so I thought though that they did some interest. I I didn't care for the guitar either. I think that it was an overcomplication of something that was meant to be simple and fun, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the, and we we did this too all the time. We always tried to overcomplicate ourselves, and we always kind of brought ourselves back down when we were making the games because one of the things we always had to remember was that it's not just score hero playing the game it's six year olds it's 52 year olds right it's it, it it's 70 year olds it's it, it it's a game that anybody can pick up 
no matter what your skill level is and just have fun and just also, enjoy it. Be a rock star for a second, mm. right? Also, speaking of overcomplication, uh, can you touch on uh, the the whole cancel Guitar Hero 7, which was supposed to have uh, a six button, six button, and of course, six I can't. strings I can't. and slot bar. I, I, I can't. I can't. Um, that's it, it, it existed. Fine. It was a thing. I can't. I don't know. Hey, I don't know anything about it. A couple of my best friends moved away to Vicarious Visions uh, in New York to continue development. Um, I I tried to get that job too. I because fans wasn't cool enough for it. I guess. I no, it was. I didn't want to go. I, I ultimately also just didn't want to go to New York. Right. I didn't want to move away to my roots in Los Angeles. Um, and so I don't know anything about that game though. I didn't even know there was going to be a six button. Right. Because all I, I knew is that there was a potential for another game and I had some friends that moved away to continue diving on stuff, but I don't know anything about it. Well, were you there today to never stop eyeballs being burned? I was, oh man, I was not. I, I am sad about that. Uh, I was in between jobs. I had just gotten laid off. I was working on a game called Hawken, which was a uh, first person uh, mech PVP shooter uh, that was free to play. It was really cool. I loved the game. We did a great job but it just didn't succeed and studio shut down. I was looking for work. I had an interview at nether realms in Wisconsin that I had flown out for on the exact same day that they had that. And I had already had the interview plan before I found out that they were going to do like what we call, they called the never saw funeral. Mm. And I, I just didn't wind up. I, 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 I flew back that day and I had partied with them afterwards, but I wasn't there at the actual party. I was just showed up later for some hotel like bar hopping and stuff like that. All uh, right. So yeah, before we head into community questions by the viewers here, I wanted to ask: uh, Can you can you tell us about the experience on Neversoft's uh, lunch menus that you were uh, or the the wiki or the wiki itself? Yeah, there was a. <laughs> Wait, did, did, who, how, did somebody get access to the wiki somehow? Like, could you just oh, openly no, access no, the I wiki? Found, no, I just found it through Gavin Pugh's uh, socials, so. <laughs> so, lunch was free at Neversoft. Every day, lunch was free. Oh, and nice. every That's single... Amazing. Oh, it was an amazing place to work. They took care of all of us. Yeah, there's a picture. Um, I, I was born in the wrong generation. Yeah. Um, and the lunch menus were lunch menus. It was, uh, California pita, uh, Domino's, uh, uh, California pizza kitchen. Uh, uh I think it was like Sam's or something like that. The sand sandwich place. Like, uh, I, I just remember always hearing like cop pitas in the small kitchen. Cause we had two kitchens. We had a small kitchen and a large kitchen. And at the, uh, like an hour before lunch, we would walk up to the small kitchen Island there's an island in the small kitchen that had three or four different lunch menus put out. And you just write your name and what you wanted on the menu on the list. And hour later, somebody would be dropping like, and, and, and this was all either delivery or the badass ladies and men who worked in our uh, like HR and other departments that would all make this possible. Um, and yeah, we just got free lunch every fucking day. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got so fat is because I ate like <laughs> trash and drank like a fish in water, and wow. I turned into a giant man. <laughs> Gi yeah, giant man in a fishbowl. <laughs> yeah, talk about being spoiled rotten. I we were we were spoiled rotten. We were so man. I I wish I wish and I was we able gave to our everything. Yeah, we and we gave our everything back. Right, like that's the that's that's the one thing that NeverSoft did so well. They did a lot of things wrong too. Like every studio does, every company does. Nobody's but, perfect. Yeah. yeah, nobody's perfect, but they treated us not just like employees, but as family, as friends, mm -hmm. like all the way up to the, the head of the studio, all the way down to, dude, we used to put the, uh, um, God, I can't remember his name, uh, so I don't want to misspeak, but we, we had in our special thanks in all of our games until, I, until we were essentially told legally not to, we'd put the cleaning staff in our credits because we cared wow. about literally wow. everybody so wow. much love these games possible right so oh. i remember seeing that in the uh, tony you are so, and i thought that was very interesting as a kid i'm like wow they think the cleaning staff 
<laughs> like that. Your guns, your guns are so old, son. Your guns are so old, son. That just shows you how much love and dedication there was around that studio. If y'all went as far as to put the cleaning staff in so the crest before y'all were told not to. No, well, yeah, I love ever something. So so yeah, uh, somebody somebody shared a somebody shared a picture uh, from Gavin Pugh's development pictures, right? Uh, one of them is a bug our bug tracking software. It wasn't ours internally. I I think it's called DevTrack or something like that. I don't think it's used much anymore. Um, I think uh, Jira and stuff is pretty much replaced it at this point. But I had a bug that sat at the top of this from my very first day, uh, not day, but maybe week of working there until the end, where it was just essentially somebody had bugged me to go outside and wash their car. It wasn't oh there's a crash here or what is like go outside and wash my car and it just sat on me it was an urgent it was the number one urgent burn bug that just sat on me forever and i was like i was like i'm not doing it but we never <laughs> deleted it just stayed there forever it was awesome well, yeah i wouldn't blame you so i guess <laughs> i mean it wasn't expected for me to do it, it silly <laughs> uh, anybody yeah. has more questions before we start with the community question uh yes um so going back to guitar Hero 3 uh some people were asking me like why did, did you chart the painted black chart? Because that chart doesn't have a co-op chart, unlike the other songs from the game. Yeah, uh, I did not track it. Um, I believe David Stillwater tracked that one, if I remember correctly. And it was a weird one for us because there was nothing to co-op with. There was no yeah. bass. <laughs> there was no rhythm guitar. Uh, that was it. And so it was a it was a hard choice for us. We we're like, what do we do? What's it just copied the guitar chart, right? It's just I mean, the guitar chart, the bass one. We could have, but we decided not to. We decided that it would be because, sure, you can have both people playing it, but we decided that there's only one guitarist playing this. It's only one instrument. Fuck it. And so, I, and I, I believe we did make the exception though to not show it in the co-op playlist, right? So you couldn't select yeah, it in the co-op. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So what is your Man, favorite? I do, I do remember that. So what is your oh, favorite? Okay. Gu gu what is your favorite guitar hero character? Oh, Judy Nails, hands down. Uh, <laughs> don't post the gift don't post it i swear to god someone's gonna do it don't post the gift bro don't do it all right oh dude i i i i was a dirty teenage i was a dirty not teenager but very young adult man i found her very attractive i would like okay, to fly gift. the dev cam i'd fly the dev cam in and take pictures of her and they, she was my back oh yeah and her boot physics here yeah. oh my well there, i have a story on the boot physics Oh my uh, God. I, I, I'll Whoa. keep it very. So you said I'll this in my it. stream, bro. You said this in my stream. Yes. Yep. We had integrated, I, I believe, Havoc Physics or yeah. Physics or yes. something I'm, like that. I'm, yeah. And so one day, just grabbed the latest build, playing the game. All of a sudden, somebody had checked in this new physics and didn't check all the characters, I guess, or something. But uh, Judy Nail's breast physics went outside of the norms of reality and her. <laughs> They just stretched out and were flying across the map. It was just like, uh, I recorded a video, wrote a bug, sent it, and I was like, this is hilarious, but probably should fix that. <laughs> Go to two, two, for real, for real. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a, I have a question. I have a question before we move to community questions. So, are you aware of the whole, uh, of the whole uh, overlapping hit window with the Tapnos for the World Tour era games, uh, you know where you the uh, where you the hit. That was something we figured that yeah, I think that's something that we found out later. Like we, I don't think we shipped with that on purpose, sort of thing, like right? Was, so I think that would have been a high priority bug. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a high priority bug if we had found it. the The crazy thing about game dev and the thing that sucks about game dev is you think you found everything and then you put it in front of uh, a million people, and the hundred people couldn't find something, a million people will. <laughs> you know, so it's like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, shit. All right. Well, we either patch this out, fix it. And then, like, nowadays, you can just patch it out, right? It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I see that bug fixed. Back then, DLC was like, uh, patched updates on the uh, Xbox 360 was kind of becoming a thing. But even then, not usually. It's like we didn't do a lot of day one patches or anything like that, right? We would do some DLC, we would patch some stuff. But for the most part, what you shift with is what you got. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong there, but uh, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. As well, so before there's something obscure about one of the Guitar Hero three songs, and it was uh, what was it was a Steve Oi Met song that got patched in the later updates of Guitar Hero three. What was it? We three mm. kings. 
We three kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Do you know it's exactly what happened with that? If you actually did have any involvement with that shard, if anything. Um, I met Steve. He's an amazing guy. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, guitarist. Um, I don't know why that got just patched in like that. I, if I remember correctly, it was just uh, because again, back then, like we're still like figuring out what, what is DLC was this and that. But if I remember correctly, that one was just a free, like, Hey, it's Christmas. Uh, here's a patch update that adds a song in because back then, especially, I don't think free DLC was a thing like that. You just put it on the store is free. I don't think that was like something that was done very much. It probably was just a lot easier for us to say, Hey, load up the game. It'll download an update. And, and you've got a new song, or I think we added more than that, right? Or was it just We Three Kings? I thought it was like I, I, a new song. I think, I, think, uh, I think the question was more about, you know, the, the chart for We Three Kings actually changed. Like, the original chart, uh, when it first came out, had like 1,100 notes, but then uh, the chart got changed oh. later on, which had, uh, oh. which had 1,096, four less notes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I have no clue. Me Go they they accidentally ghost the uh, Pac Man just went in ate a few bits. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh if that's enough for all could have been a meaningful thing that uh, they did on purpose. Yeah, no. but I'm not sure. All right. So it's, um... if anyone wants to talk, uh just request to speak and I'll gladly put you or if you don't want to, you can put it in the chat and Chris here would read it and answer some of the questions right now for all the time we have oh, wow. left. So Anybody, uh, raise their hand, write your questions, uh, anything really. Yo, October. Yes. Uh, a quick question uh, for you, Vance. Out of every sure. chart that you've done, if you had a top three or top five that you had to name out of every song that you've done, what would it be? What would definitely be there? That's what I was going to ask, too. Is like, what was one of the most fun ones you had to work on? <laughs> yes. So, I mean, this is going to kind of show what I was talking about, really, where I was, like, really attached to specific things uh, in the first couple games, and then after that, it kind of just became more of a process that I was doing. Um, but, I uh, like, they, the biggest, strongest, like, nostalgic feelings I get when hearing or seeing the songs or the work that I did uh, is still, obviously, as much as it's almost become a meme for me, if not worse, is through the Fire and Flames. <laughs> Uh, I did never expected any of the attention I got for it, but uh, I'm not going to lie. I love it. <laughs> um, Knights of Sidonia. I actually had never heard that song or Muse before when I got that song to work on. And I was just like, oh, this is sick. All right. This is it's cool. I love sick. this. This is great. Right. Uh, and then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man. Sorry. I had to pick a third one. No, no, I, so I, I had to pick one, one third. By Air Fire King. I'm just going to put them right here. Uh, sure. All right. Air uh, I'll, if I can think of a third one where I'm just like, yeah. Oh, easy. Sorry, Air Fire. Just a second. Go that far. Uh, not go that far. No, God. Talk dirty to me. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> so, I was going to say, hey, closer? Closer? Song I did. No, Talk Dirty to Me was my very first song on the job. That was the first one that they put me down with. So that was my very first time making something in a video game. So that one is probably my number one. Just like every time I hear that song, it just instantly takes me back, and it's it, it's that moment. Oh uh, yeah. All right, Eric Fryer, you're on the speaker right now. Hi, uh, Chris. Big fan of your work and uh, all the charts you've made. Um, uh, I got two questions. One, I'm not sure you'll be able to answer, but the f the sure. first one is uh, the the tool charts. There was floating around that there was going to be an Anima DLC for World Tour. Uh, do you know anything about that? I'm afraid I don't know. Damn, uh, you weren't expecting a second guy with handcuffs and a briefcase, I guess, then. <laughs> that probably and... not, no. <laughs> Wild ass story. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was not something I was expecting to hear. I'm sitting here playing Street Fighter on mute while listening to this, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> but, uh, the second one pertains to, were there any songs that anyone in the studio was against putting in the game? Or were you guys like all agreeing on songs? Like, like, hey, I don't want this song in the game. Hey, I want this song in the game. Like, this goes There's... for DLC as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was always something, right? Uh, I'm trying to... I think it was in Guitar Hero World Tour where we all were like, really? We got to put this in? Why this? <laughs> um, Losing my religion. Really? That's a personal favorite chart of mine. Yeah, wow. I think that was... Yeah, we were all kind of like... 
why this song? Uh, and I, it wound up being like, it wound up working for the game. It was one of those where a lot of us were like, eh. But then we got it and we're like, eh. No, I, I think it was losing my losing my religion was in the Warriors of Rock at the one that was in World Tour was the one I loved, right? The REM songs, the one I loved. Or just any of the mm -hmm. music. Yeah, the one I loved was War World Tour. You know, losing my religion was in Warriors of Rock. Because I know World Tour has uh, one I love, Supernatural Serious, and two other DLC songs from them. Yeah, I, can't, I can't quite remember, but the I think the the big takeaway is absolutely there are things that we internally were like uh, uh, note trackers bickering over it, or like all of us together, kind of like what the hell, Activision, why this, right? Like there was always uh the, there was there was always so, a potential for something like that. Um, I I know personally there was a bunch of us that when losing our you know, my religion was one of the songs that we were all just like why, what. <laughs> But then it wound up being actually really good. So, work uh, the game. All right. I mean, I'll take right. it. That's little favorite. Uh, Y'all have a great day. Thank you. All right. I'll, Thank you. Uh... Peace. So, I'm going to invite Drago right here. Uh, let's see if he joins. Uh, Hello there. Hi, Drago. Hello. Nice to see you um, yep. Hey, Drago. Nice to see you. I would. I have nice, mostly two questions. Sorry if there's any background noise. Um, First... Is there any charts you would say was, look, your least favorite, like, that quality-wise? Oof. Um, shoot. I mean, there was always some that were uh, kind of up or down. Uh, nothing Else Matters. I always gave uh, the guy who tracked it some crap because I, I play that song on guitar because I was a young 20-something out of college guy who knew how to play an acoustic guitar, and that's mm -hmm. what we did. That More Than Words by Extreme. Uh, those were my two jams. I could play those songs, and that was about it. <laughs> and so I was actually a little like... Uh, this is another one of those open E moments where I was just like, hey, it's an open E. You should track that. It's there. He plays it. Oh, but I, you know you can't really hear it in the mix, so I'm not tracking I'm like, track it, what? track it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got I got a little I got a little uh, do this uh, with with that. Um, I always give my be my best friend in the whole world. I just went and visited him. Uh, he moved uh, to the East Coast. I we just spent a week with him. When I first started, I gave him so much shit for his note track for um nothing else matters. Three no, it was GH three. It was the Kiss song. Uh, all night, song all night. All night. Yeah, so there's a section in the near the end of that where like he, that shit's just over tracked. To this day, I'll just look up like, yeah, is it the solo? Is it the solo? <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to give him so much shit for that. I was like, dude, what the fuck is this? I can't <laughs> see this song because of this goddamn section. What are you doing? I try to just go. It's uh, <laughs> definitely a stop chart. I will say. It's easy I, as fuck. You have the whole song, and then you get to the solo. It's like, why is this yeah. tier? This is like tier one, right? If, if yeah. I if I remember correctly, yeah. it's like the encore tier one. Tier one. <laughs> and and so yeah, uh, his name's Brian Marvin. He's my best buddy in the world. Love you, Brian. <laughs> All right. And were there any songs you like were excited to try, like, and you just never got the chance to? Oh, I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was. There was always bickering and fighting between who gets to do what, right? It's like, oh, you've got three big fans of Taylor Swift. I want to do the vocals for Taylor Swift, blah, 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 right? Like, we always ran into that uh, that that sort of infighting over, you know, getting to do things. And there was definitely some FOMO there. Um, what At this point, honestly, it's, I don't know. It's, it's become irrelevant over such a long amount of time. But I absolutely remember it did happen. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Drago. All right, Haas Excessive, I think you want to join. Uh, please, uh, I'll, I guess I'll invite you right now. Uh, I think in the meantime, uh, there are also a couple of questions. Oh, yeah, bye. Yeah, Mex TV asked how long it takes. Yeah, there was one by Mex. Uh, and I'll, I'll just answer that. I'll answer that one, too. I'll answer the one from Mex PB first. Uh, charting a song is a, it's a variable right like it could go from taking only like two or three days to do the initial like expert track all the way through to uh easy it could take weeks 
like through the fire and flames took me uh about a month month and a week or so around there three to four to three to five weeks somewhere in there to do the track to wow. do the light show to do the animations to do everything in there to and that and then that doesn't even count really a lot of the iterative process that came in after that right so um but there was also songs that were super easy like talk dirty to me or barracuda which i did which i got those songs i think done relatively quickly like maybe in a week a half a uh, week two weeks something like that at most man char charting back in the day feels feels really, really painful because uh with the tools we have nowadays like more scraper chart editor like i can i can do an expert chart in just like a two or three hours well, but, sure. I mean, we could do an expert chart in two or three hours, but when you were like, and I, I, I mean, I used to pump things out super fast too, but we have to be a little more meticulous when, you know, there's a lot more money involved and stuff like that. And it's not it, just a it's an official product. Thing. It's an official thing. So we had to take our time with it and make sure that we were mm -hmm. doing the, the, the iterative process. Again, like I said, like there's many times I made a track and I scrapped the whole track almost kept a couple of sections i was like oh those parts work but th the rest of this i'm not feeling the patterns it doesn't flow together correctly so uh it, it could it could be as quick as a couple of hours uh it could be as long as a month and a half right but usually the average mm -hmm. time to do a full track all of the bells and whistles was probably a week week and a half all right all right uh jlo uh now that you're here do you want to ask something to mr bands yeah so um i was wondering about certain songs exporting uh, that would change their genres. Was there like a reason for that? Because um, like uh, Sugar were going down in Band Hero, it's listed as pop punk in Band Hero, but in Warriors of Rock, it's listed as prog rock. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'd call them prog. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But maybe that maybe they are. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's that's like rock band versus a. Guitar Hero, I don't know the differences and why those decisions were made, right? But I, I mean, I, I also think that's kind of odd to call them pro, try. <laughs> it's, is, it, it's it's an old, or, is it an old or signed? I, it might have been. It might have been. Honestly, it's a, it's a lot of data entry and it's a lot of stuff that you miss when you go and you're doing all this data entry, this mundane stuff, right? It's it's easy to miss stuff. It's easy to make a mistake. That's why you have a lot of QA. It's why you have a lot of other people checking your work, right? Like, but even then, silly little things will just slip through the crack. Like, I highly doubt anyone in QA was focused on why is this prog? <laughs> what? What, who, what? Right? Like, it, it, I don't know. I don't mean. But maybe to, uh... they consider them prog. I don't mean to interrupt the uh, the current speaker we have, so I do apologize in advance. But speaking of things being oversight or being oversaw oversights, um, that reminded me um, <laughs> the one oversight that I'm amazed y'all didn't catch uh, before y'all shipped Warriors of Rock was when y'all put the metadata in for uh, Wish by Nine Inch Nails. Y'all got the release here wrong. Like it says 2002 oh, on Warriors of Rock, but it's actually 1992. <laughs> Oh wow, that's actually quite a bit uh, a big difference. Unless maybe it was a re-recording from two thousand two, maybe I don't know because uh, that did happen sometimes. It might have been. I don't know. Usually they would have like wrote re-record on the end of it. But anyway, sorry for that. That's true. No, no worries. No, no worries. I yeah. Jail, do you have any more questions? Or are you satisfied with this? Um. Oh yeah, I remember um, Midori being planned for Warriors of Rock because she was brought back for Band Hero, but um, not War. Mm -hmm. She just like uh, not finished in time. Well, she was in GH three, right? And then yeah, she kind of got uh... Guitar Five Band Hero. No, she wasn't in Guitar Hero Five either. She was a uh, last. No, game. she wasn't. Yeah, what? I don't remember her. Song, and she was in GH three, the World Tour games, and Band Hero. Then no more. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened with Midori. I liked her though. What about like that? What about, like she had like that about, Akihabara girl vibe going on. It was a lot of fun. Fun fact: I don't think I ever played Warriors of Rock to this day. Really? Wow. <laughs> what? <Yep. laughs> and you worked on it. Was, it was, yeah, well, it was the last game I made. Right. It was kind of like that. Like, I was bittersweet. I was. Uh, it was the last Guitar Hero I made. Sorry. Uh, I was. I was. It was a bittersweet moment. It was something that just kind. I didn't. At the time when it came out, I didn't kind of, I was, didn't want to relive it. I was really depressed. It was a, it was a rough time in my life. 
It was something that it was my first game job. It was my first time getting out of my parents' house, doing all this interesting, cool stuff. And then it was gone. Just so it, it was rough. And so I died. If I, I don't think I have ever played Warriors of Rock. Please play it. <laughs> I will someday. Oh, I will someday. All that's gone. All those feelings are gone now. And it's all just like great love for the people I work with and under uh, a lot of understanding now. So there's no, uh, there's no bitterness. There's no sad. There's still sadness, right? Like there's people I worked with at that time who've passed away that I have memories of. There's people uh, that, you know, I've just lost contact with along the way, right? That you have those memories of, and there's just the great moments that go with it. So there's a lot of great stuff that comes running back with that. So I would, pr I, I probably should play Warriors of Rock again and just kind of enjoy those memories and those feelings. And it'd be kind of cool since I'd never touched it. You it should. Fun. It is. It's well worth I mean, it. obviously I played it while I was working on it, right? I just mean, once it shipped the full package, uh, the story mode, all that stuff that comes with it. I have no clue. I didn't what? play it. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, is that good for you, JLo? Uh, so I uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, did you guys ever consider bringing over... Uh, so you know how like COD Zombies had songs made for those games? Did you guys ever consider yeah. bringing any of those songs to Guitar Hero as DLC? Um, I don't think so, because I'm pretty sure, like, at, at, at least at that time, I mean, Neversoft wound up merging into infinity ward after uh after a while but before that there wasn't really much like inter studio activision sister company like uh inner inter studio stuff uh it might not have been a bad marketing decision though to be perfectly honest i'm surprised they didn't maybe maybe they did try to work out some sort of a deal or something like that but i wouldn't have been aware of it if so all right uh well thank you jlo uh uh we'll just see if anyone wants to talk as well uh we have more from the chat. Uh, let's see. Something new under. Uh, there's one for from Mott Steam and Corviday. Uh, maybe you want to answer one of those two. That's that would be really cool. Something the wonder is: is there any references to some songs in the animation files that never showed up in the game? For Horseman, you know, anything about that? I mean, again, like. There's a couple things like that could have uh, attributed to there being some references to other songs in the game data. Uh, one of them just being that we had a massive repository of customs that we made on our own when we were bored. Like so, if we were in between games, especially like there's there's only a tiny window and where that was the case, maybe a couple weeks sometimes in between starting on the next project. But even like even if we were just like, oh, we don't have stems in for anything to work on yet. That's happened sometimes where we had downtime, and so we would just make random shit. Just, we would just make stuff to make stuff. And by the end of Guitar Hero 6, uh, or Warriors Rock, whatever we want to call it, uh, that thing had probably a thousand songs in it. I'd love to find that thing somewhere. <laughs> but in terms of uh, the actual answer to the question, I, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure like why that stuff would get left in outside of just pure oversight on the dev side. Or even in a lot of times, we didn't care because we didn't expect like the average person to go looking uh you know to rip the game data out reverse engineer it all go through the text strings and whatnot and the people that did you got some fun little extra insights into you know what the game dev was oh. <laughs> uh running stories honestly the battle the battle, oh, battle mode is kind of interesting because that's a really fun yeah. mode. i personally enjoy it that Speaking was of great. Battle... It was one of those things yeah. that was very hard to balance. <laughs> and and to of... like... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of battle mode, uh, you, you had a guitar battle against Joe Perry in Guitar Hero Aerosmith. That, were there any plans to have a guitar duel against Kirk Hammett or James Hetfield or Eddie Van Halen in the other band-related Guitar Hero games? I, do, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that one, sadly. Uh, I, I don't I know, but I, I feel like, anyways, Battle, Mo Battle Mode kind of took a back seat. Like, after Guitar Hero 3 and Aerosmith, like, it became less of a focus for us. Uh, it was, it was straight up more removed like, in Guitar It was straight up removed in Guitar Hero 5. Yeah, so I know in World Tour, I don't think they put really much any, or if any, effort into it, if I remember correctly, because they put a lot of a lot more effort into, like, the, uh, the, the custom song maker in there the custom you know, track maker yeah. 
Oh, this there's video. a lot of effort that went into that. Um, uh, so I, I'm not quite sure, but I, I, I will say like we had a lot of fun internally during the Guitar Hero three days with Battle Mode. We had a we had a blast. We would have like just like QA and note trackers. Uh, we called we were called note trackers, charters, whatever you want to call us. We would all get together and just fight each other, right? We would see who's the best, who could like out battle each other. Uh, it was it was a really fun time. We definitely had a lot of fun with battle mode. Where it originated from, I don't know. I, I actually don't know where that originated from. Uh, who had whoever had the idea? You're a genius. I just think it's a super <laughs> because cool it was a lot mode. of fun. It is. Like the only is. the only attack changes you had from the GH3 games was in World Tour. You added mines and took out Death Drain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And also in Battle Mode World Tour, you replaced uh, as, you know Death Drain with Do or Die, where the scroll speed would be faster and the attacks would be two times as as effective, or three times, or however long it drags out for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For how for, yeah, yeah. How, for how many times you beat the song all the way to the end. And I like how in Guitar Hero Metallica you changed the battle power names to be reflective of like Metallica albums and stuff. That was really creative. I love that. That game was our, probably our biggest passion project. Like we loved working on that game. <laughs> like you can see it. Like everything is custom. Everything is unique in that game. Like we just went balls to the wall. Ham. Like just also, crazy. We wanted to make the best game we could. As speaking of Guitar Hero Metallica. What are some Metallica songs you wished would have been in the game but weren't included? Like some of some examples that come to my mind is uh, "Whiskey in a Jar," "Black," and uh, to name a few. "Ride the Lightning." What are what, what are some songs you wish could have been in Guitar Hero Metallica but weren't included? I mean, you just named a couple right there. Uh... <laughs> should I should I didn't even have to look at the set list again? Like, was Harvester? Yeah, Harvester of Sorrow was in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, for so long. Through the never, I don't think that was in there, was it? Yeah, I it, think that's what you think. That's no, it's not. not. That would have been. A, no, I love that. I I just love that riff. Um. Uh, so uh, he, our staff Akiwa Komori. Asks, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Do you also do camera notes and animations for performance stuffs? Also, thoughts of Guitar Hero World Tour Definitive Edition. So, one, the camera notes, animation, performances, stuff, we did do that in at least Guitar Hero 3 into World Tour. Um, as, as, as you probably know from the Sweaty uh, interview beforehand, things became a lot more custom mocapped later on. But during the earlier stuff, we actually, the note trackers, we weren't just responsible for note tracking. We did the light shows. We did, uh, we did the, the camera cut changes. Um, we did that a little bit. Uh, I know Jenna, uh, 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 who was who be before back then, uh, uh, did a lot of uh, work on the camera stuff, if I remember correctly, and the finger animations for the guitars. Um, but we also did the finger, like she did the animation work, I think. But we did the like we had to actually put notes in the MIDI, um, to make the hand move up and down the neck essentially, and it would just play random fingerings. But we were controlling the hand position on the neck through the MIDI um through, through the note as the as part of our job with the note tracks as well so pretty much anything that was in the midi data that's we we were in charge of uh uh putting together like putting the notes into control uh yeah yeah same software it would have been sonar uh for for that as and well. of course the second question i'll keep as thoughts on guitar Hero world for definitive edition uh, again, I think that this project is amazing. I think that you guys are running with something super cool. And I'm uh, glad that at least so far, we're not seeing any like Activision squashing. Like that's amazing to me. I think it's fantastic. Um, uh, so just keep up the, I'd, I'd say keep up the great work. Like you guys are like doing God's work. Like you're keeping, you're keeping my like favorite IP that I've worked on. And also, just one of my favorite genres alive. So I think it's awesome. One, one more, one more question about this project: Who is your favorite custom character that the, the community has made for this game? Like, yeah. Oh, I, 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 I honestly don't know. I've only done a little bit of uh, researching into it. I haven't uh, downloaded it myself or anything uh... like that. So, yeah, 
Well, I, I apologize. It's you know, nothing. It's nothing on your work. You obviously are doing great stuff. I just don't have well, like a lot of time well, in my of life. You, you're always, <laughs> you're always, you're always welcome to help us in, in all of this if you want. Honestly, we always want to improve this game because to be, I'm just gonna say mm -hmm. this: if if you play the vanilla version of the PC port of World Tour, it is not the best. Let me just be very f clear on that. It's awful. Uh, it's awful. It, uh, it paid. Yeah, I, I did. But is that what you guys built, like, sort of the backbone off of? Uh, it's yeah. All, it's all thanks to Sadek, pretty much, since he's pretty much the one who's rerunning the engine from from there and there. Uh, it's 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 all pretty cool stuff. Uh, I pretty much just helped with importing the, uh, the new base animations from Metallica and then helped with importing the uh, venues from the later World Tour games and uh, the other songs as well, you know, pretty cool stuff. I think the I think this is like pretty much the definitive way to play all all of the Guitar Hero songs with all the animations on PC. Because let's be completely honest, nobody will probably pay like a hundred dollars or more to mod or hack their Xbox to play like a ten year old game. You know, it's uh, it's a yep. it's a much and of course and of course. And of course, I want to make a shout out to Akiba Komori, Clone, Marco Dampier, and Wonky with Walk Top Body because we are currently doing a project where we are charting all the, all the full of band stuff for all the Guitar Hero games before World Tour. Like we're char charting drums and vocals to the Guitar Hero Three, Aerosmith songs, Guitar Hero Two, Rocks the Eighties, and Guitar Hero One. We're doing that project. I so, saw. yeah. So you're you're giving our blessing to right. Are giving our blessing to that? Oh, this is a really, this is a really good question from Gu Guitar God Twenty Seven because those PS Two ports are really something else, if you ask me. Well, I gotta remind you guys, right, that these are people just like trying to do their the best job that they can with sometimes really old, outdated technology, right? We were building Guitar Hero Three, Guitar Hero World Tour. We were trying to make triple A like high quality xbox 360 ps3 games and they're given a budget and they're giving a time window to take this work and port it onto an older system that doesn't run as well i mean the game didn't even gh3 let's all be realistic it ran like shit on the xbox 360 it was like 30 frames per second it was if that i think it was like 20 frames per second sometimes uh and i don't know if that was an optimization thing on our side i don't know if the 360 just couldn't like handle whatever or if that was just i i don't know the reasonings behind it but i went back and i started playing gh3 with my son i was like wow this sucks. <laughs> the frame rate is so bad. So I, I can't imagine what it would have to be to be a game dev, right? And like to work at a studio that you're porting someone else's work for one, right? And then trying to make it your own, which I, the, I'm i glad that they did that. They were able to kind of have their own couple songs in it and then not just be a full port over. So yeah, I, yeah. It, it's, it's rough. I don't ever want to negatively speak on someone else's work especially knowing that it's not it's not you almost never usually the skill of the person doing the work it is what is the time restraints that they had what is the budget they had what are all these other factors that go into it they might not have been had a really big crew to do it with right there's all these things so it's like yeah they might have been bad ports right especially sure, like, guitar hero 5 and bad hero that that's quite possibly true but at the same time i try to just try to express to people when stuff like this comes up and pops up like hey it's not easy <laughs> and, and it's not always up to the people making the thing it could come down to budgetary time restrictions all sorts of other stuff that prevent them from making something better or even just the technology again ps2 yeah, mm. like P guitar of Fire bad hero on ps2 was something else oh okay yeah because so i mean i do you get yeah so Frag has a really interesting question because this, this did actually happen. Uh, if you can see it, which one? Sorry, by Frag. The uh, most, the most recent one in the chat. Oh, okay. What's the deal? With Lonely is the night being shown. Good. <laughs> I did the motion cap, not the motion capture, but the the gameplay capture. That's me playing with uh Chad Sunman, uh, another note tracker. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the lone, lonely is the night. <laughs> so we actually had plans for that to be in GH5. We were already working on GH5. World Tour was already out, right? So they're using it in a movie and whatnot. And uh, why we used that, I don't honestly know. It must have been a deal, some sort of marketing thing, whatever. But, man, I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> it was fun uh, to do that, knowing that it was going to go in a movie. So, uh, I guess if nobody has any more questions, uh, Alec, if you want to say something before we end in a few minutes. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I just want to say, like, thank you for this opportunity and just being able to talk to Chris and you guys. It's just been awesome. Um, Chris, I still got to hit you up because you said you wanted to send me a signed copy of GH3. I got yes, you. Sir. I'll, hit, I'll hit you up in DMs, and I will frame that on the fucking wall, bro. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's could it's you, true and an honor. One, yeah. Could you send me one too? <laughs> you didn't 100 percent through the fire and flames at 175 percent speed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't 175. It was 125 on Xbox. I mean, either way, it was still fucked. Oh, up. 125. Either way, it's it was fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't believe I just got, you got fucking posted by Chris. You, you got some homework, <laughs> Michael Raven. You got some homework. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, my, my, my personal, my personal best is right now, a ninety-six percent. The the experts are ninety-six percent is my personal best. Well, I mean that's good. That's good now. But one twenty-five percent on the <laughs> Xbox. Yeah. Oh. Having Chris Vance back in uh, the like, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the, I'm gonna be riding this high for the rest of the year, bro. On on, on yes. oh God. Yeah. I, I also apologize. My my kid is freaking out. You know, the the dad shit. You feel me? So yep. I gotta jump out, but it's really been an honor. Be, yeah. Being part of this. I can answer maybe one or two more as well, and then I probably should as well because it's getting to be dinner time. Okay, so yeah. that's a, I also have to go to sleep. Thank you guys for having me, for real. I, you know, I hope to be back for one of these. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, yeah, we, you're, you're extremely welcome. You're very welcome. You're, well, you're yes, very it welcome. It was a He's blessing been... to to see you, Alec. Uh, oh, it really was. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's been an honor. It's been an honor. Also, hence, also, FCS has to go beyond the world for definitive edition. Oh, I got you. Later, later. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay, so this, this is a really good question of CD World, which, which he asked. What I meant to say is, how do you feel of people modeling Kurt Cobain and Johnny Cash after their death in Guitar Hero 5? Because this is a really good question to ask about it. And Jimi Hendrix. And he's yeah. Oh, yeah, Jimi uh, Hendrix. I can, I, can give you a, I can give you kind of a personal answer where uh, uh, if I was dead and somebody wanted to use my likeness in a game, sure, go for it. I'm dead. What do I care? Right? <laughs> but at the same time... You also have to kind of respect the families and everything else. Well, these the the, the families, the states that hold the rights and the likenesses to them, are, were open and okay with doing that, right? It's not like we just decided to do it without talking and reaching to the families, the estates uh, that that own the likenesses, the rights to these to these these amazing musicians who have passed on. So, at the end of the day, it's it's whatever the family and the, the 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 estate the owners of the licenses uh agree to right like you could argue morally either way my personal opinion is if i'm dead i don't give a fuck right my wife's like when you die or selling all your video games like i don't care <laughs> i'm dead do what you want with it all right go be free <laughs> oh right God. so it, it it all just it, uh, now if if like let's say Jimi hendrix was like a, 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 a soothsayer and could see the future and was like, I don't ever want my likeness being used in a video game, then that's different, right? Because they're, it's, a, it's, it's a will or a living testament or something like that, right? Where they're saying they don't want it. But in this case, uh, it's, a, it's a weird gray area and it's just more a legal area than anything else, rather than, a, in my opinion, it's not necessarily a moral issue. But that's for me. Other people think differently. Everyone thinks differently in this one. It's 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 definitely an understandably contentious uh, I issue that has a lot of people on either side of the fence. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I I've actually got a. This is this got this is a really great question to end. So, do you have any other Guitar Hero memorabilia besides the displays behind you and the Guitar Hero Three hat? I do. I have a ton. Um, it's all in the basement, uh, on a different display case. So I just brought these up to kind of have sort of, you know, something behind me for fun. Um, I have some stuff that I'll never talk about. 
because I don't know what legalities are. No, I'm just kidding. So I have um, I have a couple of the uh, I have a prototype faceplate. I have a bunch of signed memorabilia from uh, posters from the game I worked on or from uh, the uh, the musicians that have come, that came in. Um, I, I, I got to hang out with Ted Nugent and I got to be in the audience with Ozzy Osbourne as he played. We went to a personal private Metallica concert at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. Uh, like all of Neversoft's private concert just for us with Metallica playing. It was awesome. Uh, I have like pics from that and uh, signed stuff from them. I have uh, I have a prototype drum brain, like the very first one that Activision made to test uh out the drums right we plugged a midi drum into it it's like the first it's literally the first guitar hero drum i like i have that that prototype uh nice. i have a bunch i have a bunch of other like just like really random stuff that was in my box swept off of my desk walked out the door like not not trying to maliciously take anything right just but just like all the stuff was going in the box because we had to leave. Well, Chris, uh, we have a special channel for here. It's called Caught and Unused Content. You can upload any photos or videos that you may want to share that hasn't been shared from Neversoft or Activision. Uh, that's pretty much what we have uh, on that channel. We have uh, unseen mocap of uh, the Johnny Cash impersonator on Guitar Hero 5. We have your video listed in there, pinned in that channel. So if you want to share anything from that, Please feel free. I would love for everybody to see all that stuff that you had saved in your basement. It will be really cool to have it as a part of a historian memorabilia. So, if do you want one, um, do you want to do one more question or do you want to end it right there so we can do our outro? If anything, do one more. All right. I had you can do one more. I had um, you could use this last one or not if you want to take it over from the chat. Go for it. But it's one that I heard um. You can give a yes or no to this, because Fox asked it earlier. Were you involved in the note tracking of Backcountry in War is a Rock? I think I did the drums on that. That's awesome. I'm 90% sure I did the drums on that. Nice. 90% sure. All right. Thank you. Because I had actually never heard that song before, and I loved it afterwards. (laughs) Yes. Well. (laughs) Such an amazing song. It is. So with that... Uh, now we have concluded with our session. Uh, I want to thank you again, Chris, for uh, coming along here to our server and doing this live. I really appreciate taking your time. And again, sorry for the delay yesterday. Uh, family takes priority uh, first always. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. So uh, guys, thank you all so much for joining. I hope you guys enjoy our first ever live session of Guitar Hero Podcast. We hope to do this again I bet, I... Uh, more soon. <laughs> And uh, and I, th- I thank you, I thank you for adding adding me right here. It's been an, it's been an honor talking to you, charter to charter. Yeah. Absolutely, Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Did you, did you ask and thank you for roasting me. So, Chris, do you have any mm. any social media that you want to plug in? Maybe, well, you're already in our server, but you know, for people on on the YouTube channel, uh, do you have anything that you want to promote or your Twitch? Anything? I yeah. I don't really do my Twitch anymore. I don't do my YouTube anymore. I'm kind of a boring old dad that just, you know, does dad things and makes video games. So um, not really at the moment. I'm making some pretty cool stuff I'm proud of with a team of really awesome people. But it's all very undercover and hush-hush right now. So I can't even really plug that, unfortunately. But I will say, I will say, Activision, if you want to make another Guitar Hero game, I'll come. I'll be there. Call us, call us. Same here. (laughs) My wife's like, oh, my God. All right, people, thank you so much. Uh, Again, uh, again, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, I hope everybody has a great Sunday. I hope to see you on the next session. See you guys. See See you guys. Thank you again. Take care.